The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. situation infectious disease specialist Nikia Forbes says more must be done to get COVID under control in the country as the Prime Minister promises to address COVID case surges soon the Court of Appeal dismissing an application for a stay in a recent citizenship ruling and a new boundaries report sent to the Governor General is all straight ahead this morning I'm Dwight Strawn and this is Morning Blend Wake up, it's a new day. Yeah, we start on the start of the new way. You know that we yeah, start on the end of the old way. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. Good morning again, Bahamas. It is Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Again, I'm Dwight Strawn. In a moment, Laverne Gardner will be joining us. Also this morning, we are talking with PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper as an election fever is heating up and uh, a lot of developments to discuss with him this morning. Then later in Morning Blend Business, we are talking with the Exuma Business Chamber of Exuma Chamber of Commerce President Pedro Roll about business in Exuma and uh, the way forward. It's all straight ahead this morning, but first, it's time for the overnight, the latest breaking news from while we're sleeping, and the top national and international headlines this morning. <laughs> In the overnight with continued high numbers of COVID-19 cases, deaths, and hospitalizations in the country, Dr. Nikia Forbes, Director of National HIV AIDS and Infectious Disease Program, warning that more must be done to bring the spread of the virus under control. She told the NASA Guardian that she's concerned, and quote, the appropriate thing to do in an infectious disease outbreak is you put your energy into what you can do to get it under control. We have studied COVID, we know how it spreads, we know how to stop it, we know how we can prevent it, and so now we have to put those steps in place to mitigate it and get it under control. Forbes says there has to be a plan and strategy in place for reopening and dealing with new surges. As of Tuesday, 92 people are hospitalized with COVID-19 in the Bahamas, up drastically from 73 a week ago. The Bahamas has recorded 1,046 new COVID-19 cases since July, July 1st, with the month on track to far surpass any other this this year in terms of new case numbers. According to the latest dashboard, 13 of those in hospitals with COVID are in intensive care. Forbes says the healthcare system is being stretched thin. And while a number of health professionals have warned in recent days of a system being pushed to its limits, Minister of Health Robert Wells and Prime Minister Dr. Rupert Menace have not expressed any alarm over the recent state of COVID-19 in the country. But the Prime Minister says that he will address the ongoing spike in COVID-19 cases soon. He says he will do that in the coming days. But he is stressing vaccination. He said, quote, to restore our economy and our country, more Bahamians must be vaccinated. 
Prime Minister speaking yesterday at the opening of Margaritaville Beach Resort and Finns Up Winter Water Park, rather, uh, at the point. During the ribbon-cutting ceremony, the Prime Minister offered congratulations on the milestone. The Court of Appeal dismissing an application by the government seeking a stay to the court's recent landmark ruling on citizenship. On June 21st, the court affirmed a ruling by Supreme Court Justice Ian Winder that every person born in the Bahamas shall become a citizen of the Bahamas at birth if either of his parents, irrespective of their marital status, is a citizen of the Bahamas. Winder's ruling allows children born out of wedlock to Bahamian men and foreign women in the country to be entitled to citizenship from birth. The Court of Appeal, while the government was granted leave to appeal the matter to the Privy Council, it sought a stay of the ruling under Section 6 of the Bahamas Procedure in Appeals to Privy Council Order so that the status quo remains the same. But Court of Appeal Justice John Isaac said that the government's decision to use Section 6 is futile. Under Section 6, the court is empowered to issue a stay where the judgment appealed from requires uh, from the judgment appealed from requires the appellant to pay money or do any act. Justice Isaac saying the majority judgment of the court did not require the payment of any money, nor did it require the doing of any act. The four remaining members of the constituency's commission submitting a report to the Governor General separate from the one recently submitted by a commission chairman, Halson Moultrie. Remember it Wells, leader of government business in the House of Assembly, confirming to the NASA Guardian that commission members did not recommend the addition of any more seats in the House, which currently has 39. The other three commission members are Minister of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Michael Pintard, PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper, and Supreme Court Justice Deborah Fraser. The four members have called Moultrie's submission of a report on Friday with a signature only a clear and flagrant breach of the Constitution. Overseas, Indonesia has converted nearly its entire oxygen production to medical use just to meet the demand from COVID-19 patients struggling to breathe. Overflowing hospitals in Malaysia had to resort to treating patients on the floor, and in Myanmar's largest city, graveyard workers have been laboring day and night to keep up with the grim demand for new cremations and burials. Images of bodies burning in open-air pyres during the peak of the pandemic in India horrified the world in May, but in the last two weeks, the three Southeast Asian nations we just mentioned have now all surpassed India's peak per capita death rate as a new coronavirus wave fueled by the viral, the viral Delta variant tightens its grip on the region. The deaths have followed record numbers of new cases being reported in countries across the region, which have left healthcare systems struggling to cope and governments scrambling to implement new restrictions to try to slow the spread. Sports, Bahamian NBA player DeAndre Ayton and his Phoenix Suns and their 2020-2021 NBA season coming to an end, as we told you yesterday. A bittersweet end with a 105-98 Game 6 loss to the champions Milwaukee Bucks. Moments after the loss, Ayton telling reporters that he's hungry to get back to that stage after knowing what it takes to get there. You can read about what he's saying in today's Nassau Guardian. Overseas from the Olympics, the Tokyo Olympic Organizing Committee firing the director of the opening ceremony because of a Holocaust joke he made during a comedy show back in 1998. The Organizing Committee President Seiko Hashimoto saying a day ahead of the opening ceremony that Director Kentaro Kobayashi has been dismissed. He was accused of using a joke about the Holocaust in his comedy act. 
including the phrase, quote, let's play Holocaust. Tokyo has been plagued with scandals since being awarded the Games back in 2013. French investigators are looking into alleged bribes paid to the International Olympic Committee members to influence the vote for Tokyo. The fallout forced the resignation two years ago of one person who headed the Japanese Olympic Committee and was an IOC member. The opening ceremony of the pandemic delay games is scheduled for Friday. The ceremony will be held without spectators as a measure to prevent the spread of coronavirus infections, although some officials, guests, and media will attend. Earlier in the week, composer Keigo Oyomara, whose music was to be used at the ceremony, was forced to resign because of past bullying of his classmates, which he boasted about in magazine interviews. The segment of his music will not be used. Japan is pushing ahead with the Olympics, though, against the advice of most of its medical experts, partially due to pressure from the IOC, which is estimated to face losses of $3 billion or even $4 billion in television rights income if the Games were not held. The official cost of the Olympics is $15.4 billion, but government audits suggest it's much more. All but $6.7 billion is public money. That's sports, and that's the overnight Time for a first look at weather. In your first look at weather for today, we've got a building high pressure ridge along with Saharan dust trickling into the area. That's going to affect weather conditions over the islands today through tonight. Beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to rip currents along east and south coast beaches. And residents should again remain hydrated and avoid outdoors due to high heat indices today. For all areas, look for partly sunny, hot, and a bit hazy conditions with the chance of a few uh, isolated showers or thunderstorms becoming fair and warm tonight, breezy in the southeast Bahamas. For boaters, small craft, caution remains in effect for the southeast Bahamas. Wind southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots, falling light and variable at times in the northwestern islands. East to southeast at 10 to 15 knots in the central and easterly in the 15, 15 to 20 knots in the southeastern islands. Seas 2 to 4 feet in the northwest and central Bahamas, but 4 to 6 feet in the southeastern islands. 82 degrees right now in Nassau, 81 in Freeport. Look for highs getting up to 93 Fahrenheit, 34 Celsius today. The heat index will make you feel a lot hotter than that, though. And lows tonight getting down to about 79 Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius. That's your first look at weather this morning. We'll have your extended outlook and look at the tropics coming up after traffic in just a bit. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. It's the start of the start of the new way. You know that. You're listening to Morning Blend. When we come back, we're discussing the day's top stories right here on your home for fresh news and smart talk all day. Guardian Radio 96.9. It's a new day. better so why not your business too at custom computers we've been maintaining our knowledge and relationships with top tech companies since 1987 and carry only the most trusted brands like apple microsoft hp and more no company has helped more businesses build reliable it systems than custom computers you name it we've done it call 396-1101 to talk to any of our business experts 
find trust in your tech. Count on custom computers. Cash is what we have been using for generations, but it's no longer the only way to pay or receive money. That is great news for business owners. I'm Lasagna Mizik, Managing Director at RBC Royal Bank, encouraging you to find out how going cashless can benefit your business. At RBC, our digital banking and cashless solutions provide security and peace of mind as payments are verified, convenient, and fast. Plus, going cashless helps your business thrive by saving you time and money. Learn more at rbc.com slash Caribbean slash go cashless. RBC Royal Bank. Banking reimagined. Enjoy an elevated mobile experience with BTC giving you unlimited talk for the best conversations, unlimited data for all your online fun, and unlimited roaming to stay connected while overseas. For, for just $50 per line. line, unlock unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming when you sign up for BTC Superfast Fiber Internet with speed starting at 100 megabits per second. Enjoy more great savings and value. Upgrade or sign up today. Visit any BTC store or btcbahamas.com. Conditions apply. Wake up, it's a new day Wake up, it's a new day It's the start of the start of the new way You know that it's the start of the end of the old way Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn. Joining me now, Laverne Gardner. Laverne, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Hope you are as well. Yes. Wow. Thank you for asking. Wonderful stuff. What's new up there in Grand Bahama? Um, I don't know. <laughs> good, good answer. Okay. All right. There you go. Hey, um, uh, we're going to have a great conversation today. A lot to talk about. You can join the great. conversation as well, folks, uh, on Twitter at MorningBlend969 or Facebook, facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Email us, MorningBlend at NASCAR.com, or you can text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC, 4224796, standard text rate supply. Coming up this morning, more weather and traffic. Um, in just a few minutes, we're going to be talking with PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper. He's going to be joining us. A uh, lot to talk to him about this morning. And then later, just realize that we've got a little Exuma theme. He is um, Cooper is yeah. the MP for Exuma and the Ragged Islands. Um, and uh, we've got the uh, president of the Exuma Chamber of Commerce, Pedro Roll, in our I, morning I, I business. You strategically planned this Not at all. Thing. Not at all. Just a happy coincidence. <laughs> this is just a happy coincidence. That's how okay. it is. Yeah, look at that. Um, so that's coming up uh, this morning. We're going to be talking with Chester Cooper about a lot more than Exuma uh, this morning. So a lot to get to, but let's begin with what's in the news. And in the news, some scary headlines in the in the papers today in the NASA Guardian. A worsening situation. Forbes says we must get we must more must be done to get COVID under control. In the Tribune, overwhelmed nurses leader say, says staff struggling with stream of new COVID patients. Seems like this is um, what we were dealing with a year ago. We we're back. We we're back here. Again, and very, very disturbing. The Prime Minister also saying he's going to address the matter with the surge in cases soon. What does that mean? We'll get to that in a bit. But let's oh. get through what Dr. Nikia Forbes is saying, our Rachel Scott writing about it this morning. With continued high numbers of COVID-19 cases, deaths, and hospitalizations in the Bahamas, 
Dr. Nikia Forbes, director of the National HIV AIDS and Infectious Disease Program, warned yesterday that more must be done to bring the spread of the virus under control. She said, quote, I'm concerned and the appropriate thing to do in an infectious disease outbreak is you put your energy into what you can do to get it under control. We've studied COVID. We know how it spreads. We know how to stop it. We know how we can prevent it. And so now we have to put those steps in place to mitigate it and to get it under control. We all have to do what it what is needed, and that's what you need to do. And that's how you need to look at it. Worry is not going to get us anywhere. We need to do what is needed to get the outbreak under control. Forbes says there has to be a plan and strategy in place for reopening and dealing with new surges. She says, quote, there has to be keys and strategies to reopening and protocols in place, and there has to be adherence to the public health precautions. Enforcement of that, high vaccination, and continuing to educate persons so that we can get this under control. And then, of course, there's the public health strategy of isolating cases, identifying them early, and then isolating them, doing the contact tracing, quarantine, and so on, and other protocols for workspaces. That's how you have to look at this. You have to look at a plan for reopening and how we, can, how we will keep that under control because you can expect and you're seeing worldwide that this is going to be an issue. COVID-19 is here. It's going to flare up and calm down from time to time. But When you see that things are at capacity, that numbers are high, that the percentage positivity rate is more than 5% and that deaths are happening, you know that you don't have the situation under control. And you've got to make those changes to bring it back under control. And that is how you have to look at it. Ah, okay. Um, so, based on that, yeah. we can tell it's definitely not under control here. Uh, not we, at all. Uh, not at all. We've had, you know, we're, we're at a point where cases are spiking. There's a surge. And, and not just here in the Bahamas, but you read about other countries and you see that they're experiencing the same thing. And so, you know, everybody has a responsibility, I believe, to do whatever they can to help to mitigate the spread of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, my only issue is what's coming from the prime minister in terms of, of um, addressing this issue, you know, you get a very vague um, message that says, well, what did he say? He's going to address it soon. He's going to have more to say on it in the coming days. Right. But in the meantime, he's pushing um, everybody needs to get vaccinated. So um, mm -hmm. let me just say, I don't have an issue with that. But Dwight, let's, let's look at this. If 20,000 Bahamians woke up this morning, no, no, let me change that. If 10, no. If 5,000 Bahamians woke up this morning and decided that they wanted to get vaccinated, could they? Well, well, that's a... Not this is the very first shot. It isn't their second shot. This will be the first shot. Hey, well, could that's a... Could they do it? Not 5,000. Not 5,000. No, no. Okay. But this because is... Right this, now, this came out very late yesterday. Um... Uh, so the Bahamas has received 3,496 doses of the COVID-19 AstraZeneca vaccine as the result of a donation from the British overseas territories of Montserrat and Anguilla with the assistance of the UK High Commissioner Sarah Dixon. Now, uh, Dr. Merceline Dal Regis, chair of the National COVID-19 Vaccine Consultative Committee, said, quote, the vaccines are a welcome addition to our current vaccine supplies and will be used to continue to uh, continue the administration of second doses, second doses, second doses. Okay. Mm. We, express so our deep, we express our deep appreciation to the governments and people of Montserrat and Anguilla and uh, the United Kingdom for this much-needed support. Right, so... The, the donation that they got is going to be used to continue second doses. Mm. So we can't. So my point is to get up and to continue to say that more Bahamians need to get vaccinated at this point when you know we don't have sufficient vaccines to do that. Yeah. I would prefer you to say, you know, until we have 
sufficient vaccines, I am encouraging every Bahamian to do X, Y, and Z. Uh, but as soon as we have more vaccines in, then we want you to get vaccinated. But to just continue to say, you need to go and get vaccinated. Okay, okay, how does that work? Let, that doesn't make any that doesn't make any sense. Let's to me. take a listen to exactly what the Prime Minister said about this yesterday. He said it in this report from our Jasmine Brown. In the coming days, I will have more to say about our public health health measures and vaccines in response to the increase in cases mostly here in New Providence. It was with those few words that the Prime Minister revealed that his administration would be responding to the recent increase in COVID-19 cases. His comments come one day after Health Minister Renbert Wells told reporters that the recent spike in COVID cases is likely linked to gatherings during the Independence holiday weekend. The Bahamas confirmed more than 950 new cases so far this month. Of that figure, 465 were confirmed between July 12th and July 19th. Over the last year, on the advice of health officials, the prime minister imposed tighter restrictions whenever there were spikes in cases. But Wells said on Tuesday that health officials have not recommended additional restrictions despite the recent spike. While the PM did not touch on that topic, he did insist the current health protocols must be adhered to. I once again implore everyone to abide by the public health measures. The Prime Minister made the comments as he's delivering remarks at the official opening of the Margaritaville Beach Resort and Fins Up Water Park at the point. He pointed out the importance of getting the economy back on track through the safe reopening of the economy and insisted vaccinations are the key to making that happen quickly. Ladies and gentlemen, to restore our economy and our country, more Bahamians must be vaccinated. Reporting for Guardian News Network, I'm Jasmine Brown. Okay, yeah. Well, More Bahamians must be vaccinated. With what? <laughs> we don't have it right now. We do not. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. So, you know, it's like I was listening to, to um, Dr. Forbes, what she was saying, you need a plan. She's mm -hmm. stressing that, that you need a plan. There has to be a plan in place. And it isn't just about Bahamians gathering on the holiday. It's every it's people coming in who you're not um, testing because they're fully vaccinated when everybody understands that a fully vaccinated person can still have yeah. COVID. Yeah. Right. So it's all of these things that we have to look at. Yes, I agree. We have to learn to live with COVID, but learning to live with COVID doesn't mean you just kind of allow certain people because it's, you know, supporting the number one industry to kind of just come in and it's OK. Mm hmm. Uh, I want to read, uh, I see the phone lines are lit up and a lot of text messages are coming in, but I just want to read a little bit more of what Forbes is saying. So she's acknowledging that the healthcare system is being stretched thin. She says, quote, that's particularly challenging. So the numbers of hospitalizations, that's increasing, and the hospitals and the COVID care centers are running at full capacity based on their staffing. And this is also a reflection of what else is happening in the outbreak because the numbers of cases are going up. The average daily number of cases is trending up in week upon week, and so, too, is the weekly number of cases and deaths are also continuing to happen. And this is really a reflection of where we are in this third wave. We're having a surge in the third wave, and it's caused by a number of factors. And some of those factors include the very big possibility that there are emerging variants, like the Delta variant. Then there is fatigue and people not following the public health protocols and also the reopening of business as usual and vaccine coverage and the unequal rollout of vaccines globally. That is concerning and that is why we are continuing to see this uptick in cases. And we do not and we do need to address this because we are having fallout from that. Um, so, so far, I think we are fewer than 10 percent of the population of the Bahamas fully vaccinated. Fewer vaccinated, than 10 percent. Right. Forbes says yesterday that even when more vaccine doses arrive, more must be done to combat vaccine hesitancy. She says, quote, we have to say, okay, what is the reason why people are hesitant? 
And there's a myriad of reasons. Some people want more information. Some people are making up their minds. Some people want to hear more about the safety data. Some people want questions answered about how safety was paramount, although the vaccine development was accelerated. And so it's important, and it's the responsibility of the health team and the health educators and policymakers to ensure that there is an educational plan and that we point people in the right direction in terms of where they can get accurate and credible information. She says, as I've shared with you, the persons at Princess Margaret Hospital who have been admitted to the hospital or died, none were fully vaccinated. Zero were fully vaccinated. So we know that vaccinations work and do what they're supposed to do, which is prevent hospitalization and prevent death. But we have to continue to get that information out there. And we have to have a robust vaccination campaign and educational platform to support having the facts out there. And of course, multiple opportunities for people to uptake that vaccination. Okay, so um, a lot said there. People are listening carefully. We're getting messages. People, this is a text here. Uh, the fact that Dr. Forbes is saying that we need a plan means that we, we don't have a plan. So who is Minis? Who is advising Minis? Our government is just sitting in their hands waiting to borrow or get donations for vaccines as opposed to negotiating to buy. Minis wants to spend the little tourists we making, what, to send them, well, oh, send Bahamas to Florida to take the vaccine. It makes no sense. Okay. Um, let's hear what this caller has to say. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on Morning Blend. Good morning, Dwight. Hi, good morning. Hello, good morning, Dwight. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. We can hear you. All is well. Um, yeah. Okay, first things first. I'm fully vaccinated. Right? I am a fully vaccinated person. Um, the lady touched on two points that I want to have an answer. I have cousins and friends and even a son that work at Atlanta. They are tested once a week just in order to keep their job. Okay. So her implying one that we letting people into the country, she made tourists. Hopefully they think that's what she meant. Uh, the hotels are doing what they uh, could to stop the spread of that, even if that comes through tourists, to the native area, to, uh, to, to, to other natives. You can check that. That's a fact. Secondly, um, Bahamas aren't flocking to get vaccinated. Um, I don't know who's running the office of the health um, COVID to do anything to stop the Nakia. She's Ms. right. I think that is, she's not telling, uh, she's not saying what needs to be said. The humans um, went on social media, went on Facebook and whatever, and they're afraid to take the vaccine. Let me tell you what happened with the vaccine. When I got vaccinated, you have a time frame of 45 days, 21 to 45 days before you take the other vaccine. So when this vaccine initially rolled out, the government brought in enough vaccines to vaccinate, I think, up to 40% or 50% of the people. I think when it first started out, they were boasting some 60, 70,000 doses. That's a lot of doses. That was for, and that was both. What I'm saying to you is, after those days have passed, you have to throw them the garbage. What they need to do is explain, at first, they had enough, but it will, it was wasted, because like you all just said, the humans aren't flocking to get the vaccine. What more information you need than death that you need to take something that's to stop you from dying. Like, literally, we have taken MMR, we have taken polio, morning. we have taken a lot of other vaccines that stop a lot of other um, spread. Look at the Spanish flu. We took that, wiped that right out. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, I don't understand the hesitancy or the political agenda of everybody else that comes on the radio well, planet. Well, yeah, I can explain it. I mean, there, there are a couple of reasons. Um, some people are concerned. We know it's more politics than anything else, but some people are concerned about the AstraZeneca vaccine and the fact that it's not... Right, you wouldn't believe it. I did my research on that. That is the most research, that is the most studied on... on, 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 on they have more information on, on AstraZeneca than Pfizer. Yeah. Um, yes, but again, people so point, I understand, I understand that, said, but there are people, I can tell you, people call here and say, well, why isn't it approved by the FDA, right? So they're concerned about that. And then the difference with where it's made and why you didn't approve the one that's made in India, all that is concerning to people. And then there are people concerned about Pfizer and Moderna, this mRNA vaccine. This is new. This is new technology. People are very concerned about what will happen to you in two years or three years. So there's, there's good also, reasons to be for people to be concerned. We can't dismiss that. But right. we do need and people, people to speak. Also, 
people are also concerned about the quickness of the vaccine, how, how quickly it was developed. So people have a, a genuine concern. And so for maybe the caller, it was good enough for them to say, to be told, listen, this could help save your life. And that was enough for him. And he went and he got vaccine mm -hmm. and he got his vaccine vaccination. But not everybody is that way. And I think Dr. Forbes acknowledges that. And that is why she's saying that the, uh, the health professionals need to make sure that they're getting the facts out there, that they're pointing people um, where they can find credible information, that there's um, answer questions, that people, there are people who have genuine concerns. They have genuine questions that didn't just come from a conspiracy theory, but they're, they are concerned. So and not everybody is just going to go and do it. I mean, and if, if it was good enough for you, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that not everybody is wired like that and they have questions and people, um, you know, yeah. are hesitant. And we've and talked so about we it. we just say, you know, go Go do it. Right. Go do it. But it, it doesn't work like that. And we've talked and about it I, quite a lot on the show about how the campaign, there, there are gaps in the campaign, right? The education right. campaign, the, um, we need to hear from different types of people and more people. And I, and unfortunately it's going to be a lot of political people as well. We're going to need well, to hear yeah, that. Naturally because we politicize everything, right? Yeah. So uh, we need to get the leaders of the parties together in a, in, in a PSA or together in a campaign to and, say, and, everybody you know, listen. And that may go a, a long a long way mm -hmm. in in you know helping and to answer questions because some people they they only listen to their party whatever their party say is gospel maybe if they get all of them together and they go hey i had questions i had concerns here's what i found out this is what i did yeah yeah got a lot more calls let's take these good morning caller on the air good morning Blake. Good morning. hi good morning uh what i think we should stop doing is conflating uh, two issues regarding this vaccine. I hear a lot of people, that would be your last call, talking about that we should take the polio and all this other stuff. Well, there's years of, of, of testing and research that went into creating the polio, MMR, um, the, uh, all the other vaccines that children take before they get into the school. This vaccine was created within six months. So you can't conflate that by saying, well, we stick it back then, so why we can't take it now? This has nothing to do with, with um, people not being afraid of taking vaccines. We have been taking, and we will continue to take vaccines. The problem is we're not getting enough information about what we have right now. It's still an experimental vaccine. It's not been approved by any healthcare agency around the world. It's not. So get those information out first to people. Secondly, what we need to understand is the only people that need to be prioritized for taking this vaccine are those with uh, serious uh, comorbidities, those who have heart conditions and hypertension, diabetes, all that stuff, all rolled into one. And the elderly, those are the ones who should be prioritized. Healthy, living, normal people should not. Uh, why are they rushing to take that vaccine? Because they're when scared. The, the stats, yeah. When the stat says 99.4% of people recover from this from this uh, from this uh, virus yeah but you still don't want to get it you still don't want to be sick you don't want to get the flu but sometimes you get it well the, the point is the, the, the reason why we're having this issue is because there's too many uh you people can say conspiracy theories and all this other stuff but the information the data is from the world health organization from the cdc all the information is there people can read for themselves so they can understand exactly what's going on but again if we Try all this fair amount and talk about well, people are more people are being hospitalized and hospital getting overwhelmed. Well, how any, is that fair mongering? If that's a reality, any, uh, let me explain. Any rough weekend at PMH, the healthcare organization is overwhelmed. According to WHO, there should be at least um, two and a half doctors per every thousand um, citizens. We don't have that. There should be more than four nurses per. Thousand, sorry, that's what we have now. But there should be far more than that. So our healthcare system is the issue, not the fact that we are overwhelmed. Yeah, well, all of that's the reason why we have to be very careful and to ensure that people are vaccinated and that we follow the precautions very closely because yeah, our healthcare that, system but, but, is but very easily overwhelmed. 
don't blame it solely on say we are, the numbers are the reason why we are overwhelmed. Well, I mean, does it when when you say things like that, aren't you in causing so more the truth. hesitancy? That and is the truth. It may be the truth, but is it necessary to say? The, we, we the truth not... to the public, okay. people need to have the to have the informed information to make up their, their decision. Uh-huh. We're not getting that. Okay. That's uh, all I'm saying. Give people information and let them make up their mind. Hey, thanks a lot. Um, overwhelmed with car accident and shooting victims is very different from overwhelmed with people with a contagious disease. So I think it's, boy, anyway, okay. That could also get the health professionals sick. That's very, very scary. But oh well. Um, let's the, take... point, the point is the hospitals are overwhelmed. Um, we can split hairs about why they're overwhelmed, but the point is they are. And so if there is a surge in cases, these people are not receiving the kind of care maybe that they should because the hospital cannot handle it. So, you know. Yeah. Let's take this uh, call. Um, Caller, good morning. You're on the air. How you doing, sir? Uh, doing well. Doing a guest. How are you doing, Ms. Gardner? Hi, morning. I'm good. Yeah, How are you? I heard you made a statement, right? Just be carefully. The PA on the television and said the leader of the deputy on the, uh, on the PA leadership is fully vaccinated. No political party telling the body don't take the vaccine. The bottom line, that's your body. You go to God for yourself. You know. Everybody have a right to decide if they want to take the vaccine. Yeah, the nobody vaccine nobody said otherwise. Yeah, nobody nobody, said, nobody yeah. said otherwise. We're and saying that perhaps know, everybody should come together. Not, come Mr. together. Mr. Strong, Mr. Strong, Mr. Strong. First of all, dude, nobody can tell the right or the wrong what, what to put in the body. You're going to go out for yourself. Okay? <sighs> when you die, you're going to go out for yourself. Okay, so nobody tell nobody to take the vaccine. The bottom line, what happened right now, let call it straight. People that do not trust the leadership of this country. First of all, right? I'll tell you, mm-hmm. I'll let me show you what happened right now. I've been careful to get vaccine, you know. When you have individuals, who see, politicians standing by a door at Lola Hall, all, pulling deals. Just be careful. Okay. No, 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 no. So this is, you gotta, oh, Dave. What now? What? Uh, <clears throat> We have a text you can read. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. Okay, this person here. What about the surgeon? No one cares about that. Uh huh. Okay. All right. We got. We need a vaccine. What for was that? that? One. The surgeon. Sin. 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 Oh, sin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. Um, I don't know who this text is referring to. Someone, please tell Tom and Jerry that vaccinations are not a solution anytime in the near future, simply because we don't have any. They're talking about who they're talking about us. Who, uh, when they are have sufficient vaccines for eighty percent of the adult population, they can talk about vaccines. What's the simple solution? Every tourist needs a test to enter. Every tourist needs to wear a mask. This isn't Miami. Our decision cannot be. We need tourists, so some Bahamians have to die. He's uh, he's going to look at it soon. These guys are running COVID like they run the treasury. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay. And they're going on to say, I disagree with Dr. Forbes somewhat on waiting for a 5% positivity rate to act. No, she never said that. She said that's always a bad thing. She didn't say to act. Right. She's been saying act from day one. Day act one. Act now. She go, uh, the texter goes on to say, our problem is remembered and uh, minutes are reacting to lagging indicators. They should be leading indicators, i.e. an exponential increase in tourists. That's a ginormous leading indicator. All right. Um, this one, this texture says, uh, maybe if the government completes the sidewalks down the rest of Carmichael, we'd be better prepared at PMH. If you don't laugh, you'll oh, cry. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, isn't it amusing that only because the vaccine is not immediately available, people are talking about how they can't get it, but when the vaccines were sitting there with the potential of going bad, they couldn't pay people to take the vaccine. Now the Bahamians see that this is a very serious now they are willing to take the vaccine, but this was seen all over the world. Mm-hmm, okay. Um, I guess he's going to use the next few days to think what he's going to say, and at the end of the day, I bet it'll be a stupid statement. Um, um, Bahamians need to go and use the vaccine that are there. We have vaccine. One more infection is too many. Um Period. Okay. Another one. Uh, someone in the hospital with COVID now who has been fully in va- vaccinated in Freeport. That's people keep saying these things. Um, that's not according to what the health professionals are saying. But we will. We're continuing to look into those things. You keep saying it. 
we, you got to have some evidence. But, but, okay. Mm. Anyway, um, when there was an abundance, yes, 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 we get more of those messages. Um, where do we as Bahamians go from here? Oh, that's politics. Okay, we'll get to that in a bit. Um, the information that's being brought over to the Bahamian people is so confusing. When we watch the news overseas, we see where people who are fully vaccinated are once again being admitted to the hospitals. Also, it wasn't uh, Johnson & Johnson halted for use. Why is the um, comical comment of being placed on a boat to receive that particular vaccine when the people in the U.S. aren't even giving it to their people? Well, they didn't say which vaccine, did they? They didn't say which vaccine. So No, I don't think they did. You would think if you're going on a boat to another country, it would likely be the one-dose vaccine, but... um. Hey, if you don't want it, you don't have to take it. Um, this one says, let me make this clear to all vaccinated people. There is hesitancy because it is still a trial. We are being made to feel like lab rats rather than encouraging us to build up our immune systems when we don't feel we need a trial drug. What don't y'all get? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, your caller got it totally correct. This is not on the government. It's on us. So if you are concerned that that's you, but you can't have your cake and eat it also. If you don't take the vaccine, then don't complain when you get sick. It is your choice. All right. Um, and this text here, um, you have a perfect platform to encourage people to practice safety protocols and to encourage listeners to take the shots. While there are no vaccine units in the country, remember, we do not, ta- we do not make the vaccine in the Bahamas. I'm sure the health officials are trying to get as many units as possible. Give some. Um, 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 I wish uh, you all would stop being so disingenuous. I'm sure you heard, like all the others heard in the news clip that the Prime Minister says people must continue to adhere to the, to the medical protocol in addition to making the point that we must be vaccinated. Yeah, okay, What what about it? Okay, but yeah, we're, we're, we, the surge is on now. Um, in the coming days, what does that mean? Let's talk about that now. It's pressing and important right now. What's the, what's the issue? All right, this one says, the only problem my other family member has is, okay, let me go back. The, um, I have eight people in my family, and we did our studies of the vaccine together, and seven of us took it, and one didn't take it. So how do you blame the government for that? The only problem my other family member has is how quickly the vaccine was made. So how do you blame the government for that? I don't, I don't think anybody's blaming the government for that. Mm. We're just acknowledging that there is a hesitancy. And like Dr. Forbes said, you know, we must try to educate as much as possible and address those genuine concerns as best as we can, point people in the right direction of credible information. At the end of the day, Not everybody's going to want to get vaccinated. Not everybody's going to get vaccinated. But certainly we must make sure that we are educating them correctly. Um, It's not mandatory. So you're always going to have people who will refuse for whatever that reason is. So um, you're not blaming the government. Yeah. This texture here, people like that previous caller, the reason why so many people aren't getting vaccinated, they talk about the fact that the vaccine was developed too quickly, completely ignoring the technological advances in medicine over the past two decades. They just believe that humans could take joyrides to space, but cannot believe that a vaccine that was being worked on since 2008 could be created in 12 months. Well, yeah, excellent points you're making. Of course, mm-hmm. we don't know if they believe what they saw. But, but sure. you know what? Mm-hmm. Just the, 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 the varying opinions is a great example of, of what's happening, mm-hmm. right, in the country, that you have people who are all for it and they're gung-ho and they're like, yes, this is what needs to be done and I'm going to do it. And then you have people who are like, no, I, I, I'm not too sure. I'm not comfortable with this. Yeah. And so, you know, um, this person says, did you just say to the call that it's is it necessary to tell the public the truth? 
I said, is it necessary to bring that up? It is over. Well, we've known that forever. When you bring that into this equation, people like will dismiss everything they're hearing. That's not necessary. We all know that they are overwhelmed very easily. Why are you mentioning that? What is the we? They have been we, that has been the greatest problem with Princess Margaret Hospital from probably day two. Get up now. What's the point? Oh, so that means yeah, they always overwhelmed. Forget this. Is that is that helpful? What is the point of that? So no, I'm not saying suppress the truth. Just like be truthful in what you're saying, and not try to push agendas. Although they're saying that's what we're doing, I guess. Hmm, okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, hey, we got to take a break. When we come back, a lot more to get to. Plus, we're going to be talking with Chester Cooper on this Thursday morning. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Think about that now. What's it? I used to like the way you treated me before. I used to like the way we shared. The things you go and do behind my back, don't you know, it makes me scared. You got me thinking, yeah, yeah, you got me thinking. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Got your first look at traffic for this morning, brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. In your real-time traffic, Smart Butler Highway, you'll be noticing that heavy traffic in the northbound lanes. The closer you get to Tawny Gwynn's Darling Highway, the roundabout there. So just about Harold Pond, that area, you'll notice that. Glaston Road, similar situation. The closer you get to JFK Drive, you'll be seeing that traffic building there northbound this morning. Got some building traffic westbound on Carmichael, heading toward Coral Harbor Road and uh, Blue Hill Road northbound, just north of Soldier Road as you approach Independence Drive and some building congestion near the Blue Hill Carmichael Road Junction. Elsewhere, not looking so bad so far this morning. We'll have another real-time report for you, though, after the 8 o'clock news. That's your Morning Blend Traffic Alert, brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. Banking reimagined. And time for another check of your weather for today. A building high pressure ridge along with Saharan dust trickling into the area will affect weather conditions over the islands through tonight. Beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents along east and south coast beaches. And everybody's being advised to remain hydrated and avoid the outdoors due to high heat indices again today. For all areas, partly sunny, hot, hazy, and the chance of isolated showers or thunderstorms becoming fair and warm tonight. Breezy in the southeast Bahamas. Small craft caution remains in effect for the southeastern islands. Temperature wise today, look for highs getting up to 93 Fahrenheit, 34 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight getting down to 79 Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius. The high again, 93, but the heat index is going to be in the triple digits once again. In your extended outlook, Saharan dust is expected to come tomorrow, keeping conditions a bit hazy. But Saturday, a surface low pressure system with a trailing trough near South Florida is expected to enhance unsettled weather over the northwest Bahamas for Saturday. So for tomorrow, Friday, mostly sunny, hot and a bit hazy with a chance of a passing shower or a thunderstorm, turning fair and warm at night with a chance of showers or thunderstorms, mainly near the extreme northwest Bahamas. Saturday, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms over the northwestern islands, Variably cloudy, hot, and humid with the chance of showers in the central and southeastern islands. In the tropics, we're watching a broad trough of low pressure associated with a decaying frontal boundary over Georgia and Alabama. It has a 30% chance of cyclone formation during the next five days. That's your Morning Blend weather check. We'll be back with more Morning Blend after these messages here on Guardian Radio 96.9. 
travel less, but vacation more by indulging yourself and your family with the ultimate staycation getaway at Atlantis. Relax, play, go out. Say yes to a fantastic staycation in your very own paradise just over the bridge. For reservations, call 363-6483 or visit Atlantis Local on Facebook for details. Enjoy an elevated mobile experience with BTC giving you unlimited talk for the best conversations, unlimited data for all your online fun, and unlimited roaming to stay connected while overseas. For, for just $50, $50 per line. line, unlock unlimited mobile talk, data, and roaming when you sign up for BTC Superfast Fiber Internet with speed starting at 100 megabits per second. Enjoy more great savings and value. Upgrade or sign up today. Visit any BTC store or btcbahamas.com. Conditions apply. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strong along with Laverne Gardner. And uh, rampant weather today will be the day. Whether that bell will be rung. Um, okay, we're going to get into politics in uh, quite a lot. We've got PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper with us. Good morning, sir. Great to have you with us. Good morning. Pleasure to be here. All right, we're going to talk about that bell and what's been going on and with the registration process and so much more in just a bit. But before um, the break, we were talking about COVID and what's happening here. The Prime Minister says he's going to address in the coming days the uh, health measures, what's going on with the COVID case surges here. But we were reading uh, what Dr. Forbes, Nakia Forbes, told the Nassau Guardian today about the need for a plan and a strategy um, for what we're seeing and, uh, you know, that's making us wonder, wait, so do we have one or not? Um, what do you make of what's going on? What we're seeing, these numbers that are going up and the hospitalizations going up, the deaths. What's happening? Have we lost control of the situation? Well, I don't think we have a plan for the, for the new uh, variants. Uh, we can always be sure Asian does not have a plan. I believe we are mostly reactive to the issues and the surges that we find, and then we find ourselves making very ad hoc type of uh, decisions. I am concerned as well. Uh, I am understanding that uh, PMH is, is, is full or net of full. We have a, a chronic shortage of nurses. Uh, doctors are talking about seeing younger, younger and younger patients uh, suffering with serious cases of, of COVID. Uh, so, yes, we are concerned. Yes, we are encouraging our constituents, um, Bahamians everywhere, to continue to, to exercise precaution. We're still in the pandemic, and we ask them to protect themselves and their families. Yeah, I know you're not a doctor, but, but what would... What would you all do differently? What would the PLP, what would a brave Davis administration do differently at this time with these desire to keep the economy open and reopen additional sectors of the economy? What would be the difference? We are trending one of the worst records in the Caribbean at the moment, uh, which tells us that we can be more proactive. And we have made several uh, recommendations over the course of time. Uh, for free testing and massive testing uh, for all persons who, who wish to be tested. 
Uh, we have made recommendations for more serious, uh, focused clinical contact tracing, and uh, we don't know where that's continuing. But the current news is that we are amongst the worst in the Caribbean in terms of vaccination levels. And this is one of the things that we will do and be very aggressive about. Uh, we don't understand why uh, vaccinations can't be gotten at private facilities, for example. There are people who are willing and able to pay and they want choices. And we have to bring in types of uh, vaccines and this was not uh, permitted by by the government. We we have information to that effect. Those are some of the things that we would we would do differently. We would ensure that there is a massive uh, public education drive in relation to not only the protocols but the need to uh, vaccinate instead of spending hundreds and thousands on negative ads uh, uh, that's politically motivated. Uh, we will shift some of the attention really to public education about vaccines to see if we can reduce the level of hesitation. Mm -hmm. I, I, maybe I'm being naive here, but is it possible for your party to do that education drive now? Is it? I know you're in the opposition. We, we don't have we don't have the resources of the state, uh, but we we do have uh, education programs going on with our supporters through our constituencies. Uh, each chance I get to speak, I ask uh, their physician and make sure that the vaccine is right for them and consider taking it. I also encourage them to uh, practice the proper protocols. Uh, but let's be clear, it's the responsibility of the, the government to ensure public health and public safety and to provide uh, management of this uh, pandemic and to provide uh, the public with the type of support and assurance and to provide the type of resources and facilities uh, that's required to really help to move uh, us out of this pandemic into uh, better times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Mr. Cooper, uh, you did mention also about allowing private companies to bring in vaccines um, I was watching the news, I think it was about two days ago, and um, I can't remember the lady's name, but she was explaining that they had attempted to bring in maybe vaccines, but at the time they were told by, I think it was Pfizer vaccine, that they were only focusing on government, weren't allowing or providing vaccines for private companies. But you're saying that at this point, it can be done, it's just that the government is not allowing it? Let me say that we could and ought to have been more aggressive from the very beginning in getting in the numbers of doses that we require. Uh, we recently borrowed uh, 5,000 units from a small country in the Caribbean. We're thankful to them, but it's frankly embarrassing uh, that we do not uh, and have not been aggressive in the very early stages in getting the amount of doses that we require. Uh, Barbados, for, for example, when you compare their numbers versus our numbers, I believe it's uh, up to 100,000 in, in, in Barbados who are already fully vaccinated, uh, and the number for us is much smaller. I think we have to not just rely on the COVAX facility, uh, we have to really uh, burn this to ensure that we work around whatever hurdles there may be uh, to, to get the vaccines in country. I believe time has moved on. Uh, and I believe at the moment uh, you can get a, a, a vaccination free in Miami airport without an appointment. So this wasn't the case earlier on. I think uh, now... Uh, the situations are more relaxed and we have to use all of our resources and we have to draw on our friendships with countries like the U.S. that we share a border with. Um, uh, one more on this before we move on, but we, we keep, well, we know the, the health minister likes to say Bahamians need to behave themselves. We hear that from the prime minister as well. But we do see people 
we do see the parties, we do see the events, we do see people with rush outs, and we see large gatherings at funerals. What do you think is accounting for this disregard protocols of the, the ways that we should be acting? We've been told this for more than a year now. Why do you think we ha- have situations like that so frequently and so often? I think, I think it's, it's, it's general fatigue uh, by the Bahamian people and, and people around the world, really. Uh, there is COVID fatigue has, has, has set in. People want to get back to their, their their normal lives, and the reality of it is, you know, we we are uh, sending a message that the, the best way to to get to a point where we can get back to state of normalcy is to con- so have our people consider uh, the vaccination. There's also great hesitancy in terms of becoming vaccinated, and uh, I think that's where the public education comes in. Rather than, than reckless, divisive talk and uh, quoting biblical scriptures, uh, we ought to, you know, get on the highways and, and byways and, and and really encourage the Bahamian people to to vaccinate. Let us remember that we are an open economy. Our borders are wide open for to this is our main way of life. And if Florida is the epicenter, we are getting significant levels of First, from Florida, uh, there's a lot of talk about the Delta variant. Uh, if the Delta variant is in Florida, uh, it's just a matter of time that it will be here if it isn't here already. So what I'm saying is, you know, we we have to just continue on the public education, continue encouraging our people uh, really to abide by the protocols. And we have to make it personal to them uh, to let them know by doing so uh, they're protecting themselves, they're protecting their families, they're protecting their livelihoods and the people they love who are around them. Uh, so I think we, we have to really encourage them to uh, participate in terms of uh, helping us to uh, contain uh, the virus. It's a partnership, and uh, we, we can't talk down to people. We can't tell grown adults to behave themselves or we're going to lock them down. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, there will be a, a harsh um, to that, you know. We we are a calm people, uh, but we want to be respected by our leaders, and uh, we want to be uh, treated as as partners and as adults with with civil liberties. Mm-hmm. Right, I want to get to this. I know we have to break for news in a bit, but I want let, to play this piece. This is moving the topic now to uh, the registration issue and the ringing the bell matter. Um, But we're we're seeing these long lines and chaotic scenes at the uh, registration department, parliamentary registration department. And, um, and some folks are being made to do some, some things that Wayne Monroe um, is saying are completely unnecessary. Take a listen to this report from our Kyle Joaquin. But firstly, let me say something that may sound petty. It's just terribly ugly and messy, isn't it? From needing a police report if you've lost your voter's card to officials writing on the same purple card, Wayne Monroe QC says the PLP is concerned about the voter registration process. You have these machinations, hard to understand, and so it would cause you to lose confidence in the persons running the system, and that is why the PLP calls on them to correct it so the public can have confidence. The public must have confidence in its institutions. Some voters who showed up to transfer constituencies have also complained that their old constituency information was scratched out and the updated information over it in red ink. Some even posted pictures of their cards on social media. Monroe said he couldn't believe it. This is a voter's card. Voting is the top thing in a democracy. And that is the document that they're giving voters. If you were to receive that, what would you think about the person who produced it? You would think it's a kindergarten operation, eh? And what the government is telling its citizens is it cannot afford a piece of paper to make sure that this thing is done properly. Either they are right out of money or they just don't care. 
There's also the concern that if there is a need to go to election court, whether this could be an issue. Monroe says the PLP's legal team has taken the matter up with the commissioner of police. All right. So we want to get your views on this, Chester Cooper. We're going to break for news and come back and get that from you and talk about this whole process, what we're going through, and this uncertainty about when the almighty one man knows when to to ring the bell, all of that when we come back. Uh, This is Morning Glenn. Stay with us. Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We're streaming live on guardiantalkradio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at morningblend969 or facebook.com slash morningblend969. Text us 422-4796. And now day 21, weather for today, brought to you by Bahamas First Insurance. We've got a building high pressure ridge along with Saharan dust trickling into the area. That's going to affect weather conditions over the islands through tonight. Beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents along east and South Coast beaches. And everybody's being advised to remain hydrated and avoid outdoors as we're expecting high heat indices again today. For all areas, your forecast calls for partly sunny, hot, and hazy conditions with a chance of an isolated shower or thunderstorm becoming fair and warm tonight, breezy in the Southeast Bahamas. Small craft caution in effect for the Southeastern Islands. Temperatures getting up to around 93 Fahrenheit, 34 Celsius. Triple-digit heat indices expected again today. Lows tonight getting down to a warm 79 Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius. In extended outlook, that Saharan dust is expected to remain over the area tomorrow, keeping conditions a bit hazy. But by Saturday, a surface low pressure system with a trailing trough near South Florida is expected to enhance shower activity with unsettled weather across the northwest Bahamas for your weekend. So for tomorrow, Friday, look for mostly sunny, hot, and hazy conditions with a chance of a passing shower or thunderstorm, turning fair and warm at night with a chance of showers or thunderstorms, mainly near the extreme northwest Bahamas. Saturday, mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms over the northwest Bahamas, fair and humid with a chance of showers in the central and southeastern islands. In the tropics, there's a broad trough of low pressure associated with a decaying frontal boundary over Georgia and Alabama, in the United States that has a low chance, a 30% chance of cyclone development through the next five days. That's your Morning Blend weather check. Brought to you by Bahamas First Insurance. What's first for you comes first for us. And in your morning, Glen traffic brought to you by RBC Royal Bank. We've got Mile Butler Highway, heavy traffic in the northbound lanes this morning to Tony Gomes Darling Highway. It's also backed up on Tony Gomes Darling Highway, westbound to that roundabout with Mile Butler Highway. JFK and uh, Gladstone are looking much better for you. Gladstone northbound only when you get really up there, uh, just uh, as a, on the approach to JFK Drive, where you see the traffic in the northbound lanes. Elsewhere, Carmichael Road westbound, heavy traffic heading towards Coral Harbor Road. And then again, eastbound to Blue Hill Road. And Blue Hill Road is heavy in that area, that junction with Carmichael. And north of Soldier Road, northbound lanes to Independence Drive, the roundabout there. There are uh, pockets along East Street South, especially south of the uh, East West Highway, Independence Drive roundabout in the northbound lanes mainly, and near the intersection with Robinson Road. Then Marathon Road northbound to Wolf Road, you're going to be seeing heavy traffic in the northbound lane. And then just pockets of major intersections along the island. 
That's what we're looking at uh, so far. That's your real-time traffic and your morning blend traffic alert brought to you by RBC Royal Bank Banking Reimagined. <laughs> This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. And we are back here with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strawn, along with Laverne Gardner. We are talking to the PLP Deputy Leader Chester Cooper. And uh, before the break, we played that piece, uh, the confusion at the a, a parliamentary registration departments, people showing their voters' cards, being written up in red ink like it's a term paper, as I said yesterday. Um, this, this, is, this can be acceptable. What are your views on this, Chester Cooper? Sorry, I was on mute. For okay, a there we go. Let me say, uh, let me say that uh, I, I find it concerning. Uh, the prime minister had promised the fixed election dates in 2017 before the election, uh, yet he failed to deliver on this promise. What this would have done is to provide ample notice for persons to be able to go and register. For example, if you knew that uh, elections definitively on September 1st, you could, you could gauge as to when you're going to go rather than waiting at the last minute. What I find particularly interesting, though, is that uh, a few weeks ago, the prime minister did say, uh, go and register as soon as possible, and, and nobody moved. Right. Uh, when the leader of the opposition, uh, Priya Davis, uh, encourage Bahamians to go out and register, uh, people moved. I think that's a, an indication as to uh, the sentiment in the country and who Bahamian people are, are listening to these days. Suffice to say, this is an archaic process. Uh, we have to do better. We're operating like a banana republic, writing on cards. Uh, I talked about this in 2017, I believe, in my first budget speech. It's really embarrassing that in 2017 and 2021, uh, we are still issuing these cards on paper to begin with. So we have to advance the process. Uh, one of the reasons why the, the government uh, indicated that they wanted to go to the permanent register is to avoid the rush on the parliamentary registration department uh, of people having to register. So what we have now is exactly that, because either the proper uh, framework uh, and opportunity and access to registration has not been put in place. We know that people waited for the last minute, but the reality is that there could have been more preparation. It's, well, it's well is, it, is it the last minute? We don't know when the election is going to be. We were just well, approaching a minister, rumor and speculation. The Prime, Minister, the Prime Minister said that people should register as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, we don't know when elections going to be held, and this is why we ought to have uh, the prime minister have should have delivered on his promise for fixed election dates, but he broke that promise. Uh, the same way he said it was the people's time, he broke that promise too. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, beyond the the politics of it, I think we must find the type of uh, setup. And, and, and really put in place the type of resources required uh, in future to avoid this type of problem. I know that in the past, uh, we had many special uh, uh, promotional type of registration drives, particularly in Exuma and Exuma Keys. Uh, that wasn't so prominent this time. And the process, again, is okay. Why do we have to get a a, a police letter saying that this person has reported their card uh, 
are lost. I mean, the police isn't doing any any investigation on the matter. They they're simply uh, writing a letter to say that you know this person came in. So you know we have to streamline these processes. Yes, defend against the potential of fraud, uh, but I think there are some hurdles here uh, that we need to look at refining. Much less like many of the hurdles in our system overall. Uh, we got to figure out how to make it easier, not just to do business, but how we make the Bahamas an easier place to live. It yeah. will improve our quality of life overall. And in this process, it will certainly strengthen our democracy. What you mentioned about drives is very interesting. Um, Wayne Monroe, you heard him in the piece saying that um, it seems like it's voter suppression. Do you agree with that? Do you think that's what it is? I'm sorry, you break up a bit there. Like, what do you think is behind the fact that we haven't seen those voter drives, registration drives? Do you think it is like what Wayne Monroe said in the piece we played, that it's uh, an, an attempt to suppress voter registration? I think this government has been very poor at planning. Uh, this is an administration who, who still don't have a plan to grow the economy. They still don't have a plan to manage the debt. Uh, they still don't have a plan that uh, after the emergency orders, uh, what will life be like? What will the new laws be? Uh, you know, the emergency orders are being lifted on, on August 13th, and, and, and there's no law mandating that we must wear a mask, for example. I mean, this government has just done a very poor job at planning. Now, I believe as a result of what we are seeing right now, there is uh, going to be the resultant suppression of of, of voter registration and, and person exercising their uh, right to vote. For example, if you walk in today, Dwight, and you you see a line uh, down the hill around the corner, and you have to get back to to do your your show, uh, you're likely going to return back to your normal activity. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you know we have to make the process easier. We have to make the process smoother so that every Bahamian with the right to vote uh, can exercise that right to vote in the most convenient, efficient manner. Yeah. Uh, you, you talked about the fixed dates. Um, what is the PLP stance on this? Are you, are, we, are we going to see, should you be successful in the election, bring a fixed election date and uh, term limits as the as we'd heard before for the prime minister and the electoral reforms that were promised we have a a, a blueprint for change that we're going to be ruling out uh very shortly within the next uh coming weeks this is going to outline our uh plan for rescuing rebuilding revolutionizing uh, the economy and the country. Uh, there's going to be significant levels of reform. Uh, one of the things that we are going to do, which will assess many of the points that you uh, have raised, uh, is the National Development Planning Process. Uh, we believe that this pr process ought not to have been uh, abandoned. We are going to bring this back into play. There are some uh, constitutional adjustment required and, and some legislative adjustment to changes that we talked about. Uh, we don't want these types of changes uh, that, is, that are national in, in nature, that impacts our democracy to be done in a political, uh, in, a, in a solely political way. But I think there ought to be widespread consultation on them. I think there are some things that we ought to agree on as a country. And I believe if we build it into our national development plan process, it will be smoother moving forward. Yeah. But personally, yes, yeah, something like fixed election date is something I support. Uh, we will not be able to refine uh, this process and be not be, we will not be able to make it uh, more sophisticated uh, if we keep the power and the control in the hands of one man. It is ridiculous that only the prime minister knows when he is going to call the election. It is absolutely, uh, it absolutely weakens our uh, democracy, in my view, by not giving all political parties a fair opportunity to prepare. It can strengthen if our Bahamian people understand what the rules of the game are, and there's no political gamesmanship uh, going on. I think we have a lot of issues in our country. 
Uh, we're facing serious national crisis. Uh, we have an economy that's on the brink. We still have to manage the pandemic. Abaco is still, uh, uh, Abaco, Grand Bahama, and Ragged Island still needs to be restored. And rather than focusing on those issues, we are sitting around wondering uh, how the Prime Minister is going to wake up this morning, whether he's going to be uh, happy or sad, or whether he's going to call election, or whether he's going to go to work as Prime Minister to do the work of the Bahamian people to address some of these issues. We must be past this, and uh, the Progressive Liberal Party will bring the type of reforms that's needed to help to build a country for the future. Now, some of us are very disappointed that we haven't approved the uh, campaign finance reforms um, that uh, were also promised. Um, again, where does the party stand on that? We support campaign finance reform. Uh, I spoke at a convention of the Progressive Liberal Party, I believe, in, in 2019. Uh, and one of the things I said was that, you know, uh, we have to do this as a matter of uh, importance. Uh, to protect our nation, our democracy, to ensure that our politicians are working for the people rather than working for someone else who they owe a debt to. So the reality of it is that this is something that we must approach. Again, Minister promised this. Again, he did not deliver. Uh, we know that the FNM is typically a well-funded uh, machinery, and uh, maybe he is waiting until after the elections to consider it. Thankfully, uh, he will not be uh, the prime minister if, the, if that's the will of God and the will of the people. Uh, but generally, we will move in that direction. There is campaign finance reforms. Uh, we cannot consistently move on this way. Uh, it opens up our uh, democracy and our country uh, to be controlled by special interests. And this is not a way to build a progressive country. And to potential voters who are frustrated that we are entering, it seems, another election season without those reforms, what do you say to folks who are like, why am I even participating in this? I think uh, uh, Bahamian people have, have become frustrated with the election process, and, and understandably so. But I, I encourage them not to, to lose faith uh, and I encourage them to register and go out to vote and to vote when it's out and to look at the blueprint for change being presented by the Progressive Liberal Party. Uh, we are committed to making substantial and significant changes in terms of reforms, in terms of rebuilding and recovering and revolutionizing uh, our country. Uh, we have 75% uh, Bahamian people are looking for change, and change is what we will bring. Uh, we have rolled out our economic plan. We encourage Bahamians to read it at plbbahamas.org. When we roll out our blueprint for change, we, you will see uh, many new and, and creative uh, approaches to doing some of the things we do. So our mission is to create more uh, opportunities for Bahamians, uh, to create and encourage uh, new industries to effectively manage our our economy, uh, to strengthen our healthcare uh, systems, not just our facilities, but the entire system, and to focus on wellness as well, not as a campaign, but as a change in mindset mm -hmm. and a, also a revolution in in education. Cool. Those are just some of the snapshots of the things you will see. Now, in our blueprint for change. But I, I want to make the point that uh, we are going to, to run uh, a campaign that's relevant to the times we're in. We're facing serious national crisis. We need ideas. We need plans. Uh, we have to press the reset button for our country. We're losing a lot of our young people to the United States and Canada. Rather than uh, running negative odds like the FNM do, which I condemn in the strongest possible terms, uh, we are going to focus on our plans. We're going to talk about what we are going to do to rebuild uh, Ragged Island and Abaco and Grand Bahama and how we are going to attract new investments to our country, how we're going to create more opportunities for technical training and education. Yeah.
we are going to open more new industries and opportunities. These are the kinds of things that will inspire Bahamians to continue uh, to participate in the, in the process. Luckily, we are finding as we move around the country, uh, people are being more inspired to go out to vote. Mm -hmm. uh, many who were undecided are now becoming uh, decided in terms of supporting the ideas and plans and the PLP's uh, vision for the future. So I think there's hope. And I think we're making some progress in that regard. One more question on the electoral reforms. I mean, would you say that's near the top of the agenda or at the top of the agenda? Would we see that in the first year or are we likely to the uh, back burners again, as but is often the case? The absolute top priority uh, is the economy. And when we get into office, all cylinders will be focused on how we improve the economy, how we create jobs, how we create opportunities, how we empower Bahamians, how we get business going again, uh, how do we get the rebound of our tourist uh, product, how do we create other industries. Uh, those are some of the things that we already laid out in our blueprint for change. Uh, that will be the immediate focus. Uh, certainly during our term in office, the issues of governance uh, will uh, come to the, the, will bubble to the top. Uh, we have a very diverse team. We have some senior persons on our team who are passionate about these governance issues, like, like Alfred says. Uh, we have people on our team, like, like Michael Halkidis and uh, uh, myself, who are very focused on economic and, and financial matters. We have a lot of other young people who are focused on consumer protection, uh, focused on culture, uh, the economy in Grand Bahama, the creation of uh, the orange economy. So we have a broad team. We can we can uh, cross the road and, and chew gum uh, at the same time. Yeah. But you know, it's absolute priority really to get Bahamians back to work, uh, to bring some social relief. Uh, and to really move and help to progress our economy yeah. whilst we manage our debt in these very difficult times. You've mentioned Blueprint for Change quite a bit. Um, the <laughs> You mentioned it also. Of course, we all know that your leader, uh, uh, Phil Davis, talked about how the bell would likely be rung this week and said as early as Tuesday. Although it didn't happen then, although many still believe it's likely to happen this week. But... Why aren't we seeing the document out on the streets? If you were thinking it was going to be called that early, um, I know a lot of people don't read these things, but many do. Why aren't we seeing this from you all we, yet? We are, we are ready to go. We have released our economic plan several months ago, you would recall. Mm -hmm. I believe I came to the show to talk about it. That's right. Uh, we, we believe that that's the core of, of our plan. Uh, that's I believe is, is already uh, on the streets. It's certainly on our webpage, plpbahamas.org. Uh, we have been through a consultative process in terms of our blueprint. Uh, it is completed and it is ready to go. And I think it's now a, a, a question of the launch and the timing of it. Uh, that will happen soon, as soon as we get clarity as to uh, it will be a part of our campaign. I said before that our campaign is going to be based on ideas. Uh, so that this is what we are, we are going to do. Uh, we're going to be very focused on rescuing the economy, providing social relief, uh, providing economic empowerment, uh, managing our natural resources, and a progressive youth agenda. Those are some of the things that you will see in the blueprint. Mm -hmm. There is a, an, an interesting article in today's Tribune about a, a poll although um, only 400 people were included in the poll, but that uh, it says that um, the poll gives Prime Minister Minnis a lead over Philip Davis in approval ratings. Uh, what do you make of that? And um, also, what do you make of have issues with both leaders and are really stuck? They like people like you and they like Dwayne Sands from the FNM, but they have issues with the leaders of the party and are very concerned about this and how that's going to influence their vote. What do you say to folks who are in that, sharing that mindset? Well, I haven't seen the polls. I understand that it, it doesn't meet this, this, the smell test in, in terms of the science. Uh, you mentioned that only 400 people were, were polled. 
I believe a standard rule of thumb is 1,000. Uh, I believe there are some cultural nuances that may not have been considered. I understand the polling was done by an American firm. Uh, you know, so, so there's a there's an old Bohemian saying that, you know, paper will stand still and, and let anybody write on it. Uh, when you go on the street, you hear that people are sick and tired of being sick and tired of menace. Uh, and therefore, it would be very surprising to me uh, that any uh, right majority of Bahamians would support Minnesota in the upcoming elections. So I think this poll is completely uh, discredited. Uh, it ought not to be taken seriously. Uh, and uh, Bahamian people should simply listen to the conversations at the water cooler. Uh, and that will give you the best sense as to uh, whether people believe that the country is going to, in the right direction. Uh, people don't believe it's going in the right direction. Uh, and people don't believe that Minas can turn it uh, in the right direction. So so let's just set that pooling aside. Mm -hmm. You asked another question. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there, there seemed to be a, a, a counting in, in, in overdrive uh, against Philip Brave Davis. I believe many people want to hear ideas. Uh, who's um, behind that I, campaign? What, what do you think? What, what's that? Why do you think that? It's f &M propaganda. It's electionary. Uh, it's motivated to, to smear the leader of the progressive liberal party rather than focus on the fundamentals of uh, moving our, our country forward. Uh, Davis is an, an experienced leader. Uh, he's compassionate. Uh, he's inclusive. Uh, he takes advice. Uh, he has helped thousands of Bahamians across our, our, our islands. Uh, and you, you only need to, to travel with him once around the family islands. Uh, and, and you will see the love that the Bahamian people uh, have for him. Uh, we have a country to build. Uh, we will stay focused as a political party, as a, a government in waiting. Uh, Davis has recruited uh, many young people. Uh, I work very closely with him as deputy. We have a strong team. The country will be run by an executive comprised of a cabinet. And we have a, a healthy number of persons within that team who will form a part of the, the management of our country moving forward. I am confident of our ability to move our country ahead. I'm looking forward to working with Prime Minister Davis. Uh, he has a real commitment for people. He knows who his bosses are. He knows that he's working for the Bahamian people. And I believe that's where, that's where it comes and that's what the Bahamian people will see. Go ahead. Mr. Cooper, are you finding as you, as your party moves um, throughout the country, that people are genuinely embracing your party's message, its vision, um, or is it just a matter of people are just tired of the current government and they're just latching on basically to whatever other option is out there? I think it's a combination. People are definitely tired uh, of this. Uh, they're tired of the lies and the broken promises of the FNM. And at the same time, they want something new. They want something new more than, you know, the rhetoric. Uh, they want to see tangible plans. I find that our economic plan is really resonating. I find that when we talk ideas with the Bahamian people, uh, they're listening. I find that our young people don't want to leave our country. I spoke with a young lady yesterday who told me that she found a, a job in, in Florida. And she don't really want to go, but you know, it's her level of expertise required that she go because the opportunity isn't here for her. Uh, so we want to be able to to work actively to expand the opportunities available in new industries uh, for Bahamians to be able to stay home and build and grow our country. Uh, those Bahamians who are living abroad. Uh, we also have a program to draw on their expertise as well. 
it, it's important uh, Bahamians living abroad also contribute to national development, uh, and therefore we'll have an active outreach uh, to them as well. So yes, people are excited about our plan. Uh, yes, many of the undecided are becoming uh, PLPs, and yes, Bahamians are sick and tired uh, of being sick and tired of the Minister administration. All right. What do, what do you? Sorry. What do you? What do you say to the people? Because there, um, there are a group of people, core group of people who are just at the point where they aren't prepared to go and vote for anyone. How are you, what's your messaging? How are you reaching them to convince them maybe, you know, to, hey, give it one more try. But they're at a point where they're like, you know what? I'm not inking up my mm -hmm. finger for anybody. I think voting is, is, a, is a fundamental uh, right. And if Bahamians are frustrated with the direction of the country is going, uh, that the, that of the direction the country is going, if they're frustrated by that, there ought to be a motivation uh, to cause there to be change. I think as citizens, we have an opportunity uh, to select the best leaders for our country uh, who can help us to see uh, and cause there to be the changes that we want to see in our country. And we have an obligation as voters to participate uh, in that process. Uh, I encourage Bahamians to really uh, look at our economic plan, uh, look at our blueprint for change, look at the youthful, dynamic, uh, unexperienced cadre of candidates who we are providing, uh, get to know them, uh, and, and to support them. Uh, we are confident that we have uh, the right team. Uh, we're confident that we have a plan. We're confident that we have people uh, who are focused on the growing and progressing our country uh, and not just the politicking of politics. Mm -hmm. So I encourage Bahamians everywhere. If you're not just yet, and there's still an opportunity uh, to go out and, and get registered. Uh, and to go out and vote, uh, both BLC. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, a few more questions for you, Chester Cooper, and we might even squeeze in a call or two. We'll see. Uh, this is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Stay with us. Switching your mortgage to CIBC First Caribbean is easy, affordable, and convenient. We'll help with your switching cost, give you three months payment free, and waive your commitment fees so you can enjoy the break you need. Plus, you'll get up to 95% financing and a pre-approved Visa Gold or Platinum credit card with 5,000 bonus reward points and more. Switch your home base to CIBC First Caribbean. Terms and conditions apply. Visit CIBCFCIB.com for more information. It's so summer with Esso, and that's why we're giving away thousands of dollars in fuel, food, and other fun prizes every week. Simply fuel up at $25 or more. Enter using your receipt, and you could be a winner this summer with Esso. Terms and conditions apply. Visit bettergasmileage.com slash it's so summer, or our Facebook page for details. Promotion ends August 29th, 2021. It's fun! Food, fuel, and other great prizes every week. The Esso brand is a trademark of ExxonMobil Corporation and is used under license. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. There's only one way to have a better morning. Oh. Start your mornings the best way with our dollar breakfast sandwiches at Wendy's. For a limited time, choose any two of your favorite breakfast sandwiches, including the fresh crack and sack muffin, honey buttermilk chicken biscuit, double sausage muffin, or the sausage egg and cheese biscuit. Wash it all down with our cold brew shake or coffee. Better mornings always start at Wendy's. Wendy's, different inside and out. Excludes airport locations. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Street has those hard-to-find fasteners for you right now. You can find stainless steel regular hex, carriage bolts, galvanized bolts, threaded rods, nails, self-tap screws, sex bolts, 
anchor bolts, turnbuckles, masonry tools, hand tools, and weed whacker strings. Check out the rope selection and car body fasteners too. Special orders are welcome. It's your number one fastener store. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Streets. Call 326-1976. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And we are back here with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strong along with Laverne Gardner. We are running out of time with Chester Cooper. Laverne, you have a question? Yeah. Yes, I um, just want to shift gears a little bit, but, you know, we can't let you go unless I bring up the uh, parliamentary report and the controversy surrounding that. And now we understand that the rest of the uh, members, committee members, they've submitted a report as well. What is the uh, difference in the report that um, the other members have submitted as opposed to the one that um, um, Mr. Moultrie submitted? Uh, let me just say briefly on this point uh, that the deputy chair of the commission is Justice Fraser. Uh, the report yesterday, uh, along with Justice Fraser and the government members, uh, that report is submitted, I believe, yesterday, I can't say with certainty, uh, to the governor general. Uh, I, I won't discuss the internal workings of the uh, commission. I won't descend into uh, name calling and political back and forth with this process. Uh, we made some significant uh, recommendations for reform for the future. Uh, we have recommended an independent ongoing boundaries commission. We believe that there can be more science put into the process and we believe there has to be effort to remove uh, some of the politics from, from the equation. So I, I would only speak broadly to it as a member of the committee. Uh, I, I won't go into the details of it. I know that it will be appropriately released to the public in, in due course, uh, but I have very little interest in the, in the back and forth that we are seeing. Uh, I will not uh, engage in any response to anything that the chairman of uh, the commission uh, uh, may have said uh, the Bahamian people are really concerned uh, about the crises that we face in our economy, uh, the rebound of our economy, the rebuilding of uh, our Paco Grand Bahama and, and Regatta in their minds uh, mm -hmm. is the situation with COVID. I, I think as, as national leaders, uh, we, we must not uh, be caught uh, playing politics in times like this when Bahamians uh, are really looking for leadership. Uh, and, and therefore, I think this, this is the sideshow. Uh, Bahamian people want there to be an election so that they can give a, a government the, the new mandate. Uh, and and uh, uh, Minister Belize is calling to a fictional poll uh, that he is leading, and if he believes that, he should simply call the election. The Bahamian people want this to be over with. They want to focus on really the fundamentals of growing our economy and managing COVID uh, and really moving moving forward. Yeah. And There's a lot of uh, uh, fatigue among politics in our country. Realistically, anything, do you think there are things in the report that could be addressed in time for the election, whenever that might be? Do you think that's possible? I, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. Mm -hmm. uh, as being possible as at this point as right. a, a significant uh, priority, as I, I've indicated. Uh, I do believe that there is some opportunity for, for reforms, uh, but I believe those reforms will, will happen before uh, the next general election, mm -hmm. not this one. Could um, uh, talk to you about, but um, I know you have to go, and thank you so much for the time and the extra time there this morning. But we always appreciate talking with you. Thank you so much. I'll come back anytime. Thank okay. All right. um, hey, Laverne, we're going to break for news headlines. When we come back, more on Exuma. This time, we're going to, oh, well, not more. We didn't get to talk to just Cooper about Exuma, yeah. his constituents, but we will be talking about Exuma. We've got the, uh, the president of the Exuma Chamber of Commerce, Pedro Roll, with us coming up in just a bit. So stay tuned for that.
in Morning Blend Business. We'll be back. Stay with us. Wake up today. Wake up. It's a new day. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Wake up, wake up today. Wake up, it's a new day. Good morning and welcome to Morning Blend Business on this Thursday, July 22nd, 2021. Welcome back to our Morning Blend listeners. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn, along with Laverne Gardner on this Thursday morning. And this morning in Morning Blend Business, we are talking about Exuma. And we've got the Exuma Chamber of Commerce President, Pedro Roll, with us. Good morning, Mr. Roll. Great to have you with uh, good us. Morning. Good morning, Dwight. Good to be here. Hi. So we just had your uh, member of parliament, uh, Chester Cooper, on. I uh, didn't get a chance to talk to him about Exuma, as we had a lot of other things to talk about that with you today. And I, I have to say, other than Andros, I think um, there's no other island that people speak about in terms of potential like they do Exuma. And I uh, want to get your on-the-ground perspective of how things are going and whether Exuma is indeed living up to its true potential and what exactly is that true potential. Um, so just give us a basic overview of how you think things are going right now and uh, what the future looks like before we get into any specifics. Well, I think that generally speaking, the future for Exuma is very, very bright. Exuma has a wonderful potential. I think that uh, bar none, uh, I, I think that we've got the potential to be probably the flagship island in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I think the, the future of the Bahamas, Dwight, uh, rests not in uh, Nassau, as you Nassauvians tend to think, but I think the future of the Bahamas rests in places like Exuma and in Luther and Andros and those islands because the potential is just men unlimited from our perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and so generally speaking, the potential is good, whether or not we are living up to our, our potential. I'm going to say no uh, at, the moment, at the moment because we can do so much more, but I think the future is bright. Yeah. What does that future entail from your perspective? What What is it? Is it tourism? Is it something else? What, what is it? Well, I think it's a combination of many things. And I think oh, the um, when we look at what is sustainable, and I, I, am, I am challenged to always want to put... Um, the future of our islands in, in the hands of tourism, because I think that and what, what we've seen over the past year, uh, that's, that can be um, a very, very shaky ground. That's not always good foundation, but I think that must be just one of the components in making our, our, our island, you know, a, a real island. So the what's not being tapped, I, I believe, is the natural resources that we do have in terms of our ability to um, harness, uh, you know, our fishing potential and our agricultural potential. These are not new things. Mm -hmm. uh, the investment in these areas, I think, uh, will be tremendous. But for some reason, I think that we take all of our resources and we always want to put them in touristic kinds of things and not want to make the sacrifice up front to invest in what I think are sustainable things, things that God has given to us, things that... Um, no one can, it doesn't matter what happens uh, worldwide. If we have these things, it's still, we can still maintain ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, that's it brought up some interesting points. It's going to lead me to a lot of questions. So, uh, Mr. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Roll, how then do you, how do we get there? How do we shift that mindset where we're not just only focused on the tourism aspect for Exuma and we start to tap into all of these other 
available resources? Well, well now, and again, we, we're going to go, when we talk about sustainability, I am a proponent that the very nature of our governance um, causes family islands to be become self-dependent. And so what, what that does is, uh, because everything has got to go up through this, you know, um, whole network of, uh, uh, you know, government bureaucracy and what have you, things just don't get done. So fundamentally, what would cause us to be able to grow by leaps and bounds in a very short order is to decentralize the decision making processes uh, on the family islands. Because what is good for Andrus, for instance, and what may be most beneficial for its advancement may not really be what's best for Exuma or Long Island or Eleuthera. And, and because the decisions are being made from a central uh, government point of view, they tend to homogenize all of these things and, and they become like family island development, not Exuma development, but family island development. Right. And, 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 it, and I think it, it, we get bogged down and we don't really move as we ought to move. I think if we can take the shackles off yeah. and put the power on the on the ground, you will see tremendous development in the family islands from a business perspective. How widespread is that type of thinking on the island? Is it just a few business people like yourself, or do most people get it? That is what's required. I think most people who give it thought, uh, they feel this way. This is not some um, isolated thing, and this is not some... Uh, point of view of the some uh, elite, and this is this is a complaint. Let me give you an example. Um, right now, for instance, we are I don't know many of our family islands. I think Exuma is not no exception. Like, but right now we are doing roadworks in Exuma, for instance, right? And we take a look at the the challenges that we are facing. That the decision was made to repair the roads. This decision was made outside of Exuma. Um, a, an independent contractor comes in, uh, they do all of the road dig-ups, there's no consultation with, with locals in respect to how this ought to be done. Uh, the road work is a complete disaster, a complete insult to, local, to locals in terms of how it's being handled. There's no communication with locals in terms of, all right, why is the road work being um, uh, hampered? Uh, you know, why are the roads dug up and nothing being done? But we don't know why. But I'll bet you some somebody sitting in some office in NASA has the answer, mm-hmm. right? And and if we can have if these things were being done locally, uh, when there were challenges, we can mitigate against those challenges and say, you know what, uh, we need to uh, stop this or pause this this because it is doing more harm than good to our economy, mm-hmm. right? So these are the kinds of things I'm saying that if these decisions are on the ground, man, listen, we get an opportunity to have our input. We talk about this all the time on Morning Blend. Uh, people criticize us for it, actually. We talk about stronger local government, empowered local and island administrations. But what we hear from people here in Nassau is that they seem to believe that if left to manage their own affairs, some of these islands would become corrupt little countries um, unto themselves. What do you say to people who have no faith in our family islanders, that they know what they need to do and that they can run their own affairs semi-autonomously. Yeah, but let's go back and look at our history. That's not the first thing that first time that this kind of thinking uh, has been leveled at even Bahamians. Uh, that's that was the mindset when um, it was an independent country, right? The the opposition was that uh, this little black country mm. with these black leaders uh, would lead us into utter ruin. Right, and before long, we'd be nothing but a banana republic. Right, so um, we are being governed by somebody, um, and if you're going to tell me that uh, what gives the uh, bureaucrats in Nassau more intelligence, are they more honest than Family Island uh, uh, persons? Um, <laughs> um, if we in the Family Islands, if we have a a budget of twenty million, uh, so we are going to steal. But the central government that has a budget of a hundred million that they won't steal, I mean, it, to me, it is just so close-minded mm-hmm. and it is counterproductive. We 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 give people the opportunity to manage their resources and we put the controls in place on a on a local level. It is easier for me to know, for us to know, on a local level, if resources are being mismanaged. Mm-hmm. 
than for us to know on a national level how and when these resources are being managed. Mm -hmm. So to me, that argument makes no sense. Yep, and you'd be um, able to go and pursue who you want, uh, your own foreign direct investment, independent of Nassau deciding that this is where it should go. Um, I, I'm just amazed that so many people have a challenge understanding that, but um, definitely the time has come. Um, uh, how vocal are you in, you and other residents in Exuma, in expressing that desire to the politicians when they do come down knocking on your doors? But you see, but this becomes, uh, and in our, you know, our views get aggregated on this issue uh, in, in some respect, because, like, really, what is the real forum for having heard on an issue such as this? So these views are expressed, I think, um, you know, in different circles and different opportunities. So from my perch uh, from the, uh, as chamber president, you know, so I express these views because I am a strong, strong proponent, not in this this um, animal that we call local government, right? Because I think as is as it is presently constituted, it is a farce. But I'm talking about the whole concept of local governance, mm -hmm. right? So where where real teeth is being given, real structure is put in place, where budgetary concerns are made locally and not uh, in, in finance office in Nassau. But we determine what our, based on what our revenue uh, intake is, uh, uh, what our share of that should be. Now we can determine, uh, you know, how do we allocate those resources? We determine which road roads needs to be repaired. We determine exactly, uh, uh, we have an input in the teachers that's required uh, until we can make those decisions. And we, as I said, we've expressed these in certain circles, but there is no central place where this can be vetted out, and then where central government actually listens to us. Mm -hmm. Because if you take a look at the platform of, of our governments, in none of these platforms do we see real, meaningful, radical attempts to empower right. local governance. Right. Not government now, but governance itself. Yep. You are right. Yep. And um, they demonize this kind of talk, actually. Um, all right. Let's um, uh, talk about some interesting things that have come about as a resort, um, result of uh, home porting. And we know Crystal Cruises, this is what, week three now, I believe, of their uh, home porting here and, uh, and their all Bahama Islands cruises. Let's talk about it from your perspective, how, what this has meant for Exuma uh, once a week. Um, uh, what are your views on this? All right, now, right, you're going to get me in trouble here uh -oh. because I am one of those um, skeptical voices uh, who believe that, um, and, and here again, this is going back to my original point, that we need to take a look at these islands individually and what's good for maybe uh, Long Island or some other island may not be um, in the best interest of Exuma. Mm -hmm. I am skeptical uh, about the overall economic impact uh, that the, the these island cruises will have on Exuma. I'm skeptical because, uh, you know, I've taken not an in-depth study, but I've taken a look at, I mean, I don't see any instances of cruise ship uh, coming into destination where they have significantly improved the economic um, life of small and medium-sized businesses, um, small entrepreneurs. I don't, we don't see that historically. And, and historically, this has been a better, a bigger advantage for the cruise ship lines than for the destinations. Because the reality is, cruise ship lines are destinations unto themselves. They are the destination, right? So they come and they basically use our ports and what have you, but they get the lion's share of the revenue and, and, and the trickle down uh, effect to the uh, vendors, for instance, is minimal despite what they propose, right, right? So as it relates to Exuma, um, I'm skeptical because I don't see, Exuma has, we've been trending in a particular direction as it relates to tourism. Uh, we have been attracting high-end tourists, persons who come in, they spend quite a bit of money. The average length of stay based on the Ministry of Tourism's report last year was, I think somewhere around uh, people, they come to Exuma, they spend about 10 days. Like this, this type of tourists, when they come to Exuma, 
they spend a lot of money. It's a lot of money for the hotels, a lot of money for the car rentals, a lot of money in restaurants and what have you. They spend a lot of money, right? And I don't know you on from a personal point of view, uh, if you've been on cruises, I've been on cruises. And, and I can tell you that my expenditure at any destination is very minimal in the, in, in the whole scheme of things. Mm-hmm. So our issue then is how... Well, I mean, it depends on what I, what I see or what, what is there, what's available, and what I'm able to take back on the ship, doesn't it? it, it yes. And, and okay, but okay, let, let, you can look at it that way. So when you come to Exuma, what are the high end, like, like what would cause a cruise ship passenger to spend um, $500 in the, in the few hours that they are on the island. Mm. Mm-hmm. See, I mean, let me stick about this. If we prepare for certain things and we can say, all right, they come in and maybe they do the, uh, they go and go to the swimming pigs. That particular industry in Enjuma really have been doing very, very well. Right? And especially uh, in, the, in, the, in the last few months. I'm not so sure that particular industry might get additional passengers, right? But still, Exuma was doing well in any event. Th- that's not going to change the trajectory um, of the economy of Exuma if we have a few more people doing the tours to the swimming pigs. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm saying I think uh, that investment that's being made to accommodate cruise lines, if that investment is made to improve the, the tourist life when they come by plane, and what have you, that's a more sustainable and on a perturous basis, we generate more income for the Bahamas. You know, what, what would you rather have? You'd rather have a bunch of uh, spring breakers come or you'd rather have a bunch of uh, business people who come in with what, uh, with money to, to spend and, and on a per visitor basis, they spend more money. What are you looking for? And Exuma, I think that we are, we are set up to cater to the high, to the yeah. high income um, visitor. Yeah, obviously the latter, of course. But, I mean, with this being a luxury cruise line, and you, and you made your good point before about the limitations of this, but with a luxury cruise line, is there not the potential for return visits, people who will come back and do exactly what you are seeking to attract? Um, is that not just that this is the opportunity to whet their appetite so they say, I've got to come back to Exuma? I, I'm, I'm one can make that argument, but I'm saying in, if you're going to do that, Prior to all of this happening, there ought to have been some um, ground set swell. You ought, you ought to have um, state local stakeholders who may have things that will attract you. Even how are they going to even know about what's available on mm-hmm. Exuma? Mm-hmm. Understand that yeah. they're coming in, they're, they're spending a day in Exuma, right? Um, how many opportunities are we going to sell? Have to sell Exuma to these people in the short period of time that they do come in? Right, mm-hmm. because if they come in, and if many of them go, and they do, if they go on the uh, the water tour and what have you. When they go, by the time that's done, that's the only thing that they would have experienced in Exuma. Right? What else would they have seen? What other business opportunities will they, they have been exposed to that says, you know what, this is a place I want to invest in, or this is a place I want to have a second home, and uh, just from looking at it from the water. Uh, my point is, I think that we can sell Exuma through the Ministry of Tourism or some tourism local board, we can sell Exuma what it has to offer on a wider scale um, be, beyond the cruise ship line and, I, and still do a wonderful job. Mm-hmm. My issue, though, is um, we are focusing... Like, I'm not, I don't want to appear to be uh, t- like I am against cruise ship lines. I'm, I'm really not. It's a business opportunity. They have a right to sell their product, right? All I'm saying is... I think that for the resources that we are putting into it and for the, I think, environmental risk that's attached to it, I believe that we can get more bang for the dollar if we focus on a different tourist tourist product. Okay. Uh, We're going to pick this up after the break. We need to take a break, and we'll be back. We're talking with Pedro Roll, the president of the Exuma Chamber of Commerce, having a great discussion about his island today. Uh, We'll be back with Morning Blend Business after these messages. They're coming from America and Canada, inviting you down to my hometown. This show is showing smiling faces over here. 
Jesus welcome away to you. Oh, when you get here, you hear them. Oh, no, we didn't know who said. You invest in your children, your home, and your community. But are you investing in your financial future? At CFAL, we specialize in investment management, retirement planning, mutual funds, and private wealth management. Our team of experts never stops helping you plan for tomorrow. Because tomorrow begins today. Call us at 502-7010 to see what our financial advisors can do for you. CFAL. Growing wealth for future generations. Travel less, but vacation more by indulging yourself and your family with the ultimate staycation getaway at Atlantis. Sleep in, relax, play, go out. Say yes to a fantastic staycation in your very own paradise just over the bridge. For reservations, call 363-6483 or visit Atlantis Local on Facebook for details. RBC has been growing with the Bahamas for over 110 years with new ways to bank better. We are committed to deepening our relationship with existing clients and forging new ones in the future with new products and services and investment in the community youth and education initiatives. We are here to help you grow. We're here to help you flourish. We're RBC. RBC Royal Bank. Banking reimagined. It's so summer with Esso, and that's why we're giving away thousands of dollars in fuel, food, and other fun prizes every week. Simply fuel up at $25 or more. Enter using your receipt, and you could be a winner this summer with Esso. Terms and conditions apply. Visit bettergasmileage.com slash it's so summer. Own ends August 29th, 2021. It's fun! Food, fuel, and other great prizes every week. The Esso brand is a trademark of ExxonMobil Corporation and is used under license. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. It's time for your morning business report brought to you by CFAL. Prime Minister Dr. Berman is promising that his government will address the issue of derelict buildings in downtown Nassau through legislation and by other legal means. Noting that there have been successive public and private efforts to revive downtown Nassau over the years, Min has admitted that while there has been progress made in some aspects and others, there's been regression. He said the vexing issue must be addressed he says there are too many derelict buildings in the city center. He says these have become eyesores. He says, quote, while some of the old buildings can be refurbished, many have to be demolished. My government intends to address this issue judiciously through legislation and other legal means. Once this is done through legislation, we will seek to ensure that buildings in the city center are no longer abandoned and left to deteriorate. This includes government and commercial buildings. The Minsk administration has said upgrading the city center was a primary focus since it came to office four years ago. Several new developments have progressed in the area, including the demolition of the post office on East Hill Street, the development of the Prince George Dock and the new U.S. Embassy, and also the completion of the Point Resort. And speaking of downtown, Chief Executive Officer of Margaritaville Holdings, John Conlon, Colin saying that the newest addition to its group of resorts, Margaritaville Beach Resort at the Point Bahamas, has exceeded all of his expectations during the, a ribbon-cutting ceremony at the property in downtown Nassau yesterday. Colin saying that what's most impressive to him about the resort are the smiles on the faces of the approximately 150 new Bahamian employees at the 155-room resort. You can read more about his comments and his confidence that tourism will return in today's Guardian business section. 
Overseas, for months, anyone who wandered onto a dealer lot to look for a used car could be forgiven for doing a double take and then wandering right off the lot. Prices had rocketed more than 40% from their levels just before the viral pandemic struck to an average of nearly $25,000 in the U.S. The supply of vehicles had shrunk as well, and any hope of negotiating on price Not much luck with that, but now a sliver of hope has emerged. The seemingly endless streak of skyrocketing used car prices appears to be coming to a close. Though average wholesale prices that dealers pay are gradually dropping, they'll likely remain near record levels for now, though. But the retail prices for consumers are expected to stay high for a little longer as well. Supply remains tight, and while demand has eased a bit, a steady flow of buyers could keep prices unusually high for a couple of years to come. So we will wait and see when you will feel the difference there. And more from the U.S. The number of Americans seeking unemployment benefits rose last week from the lowest point of the pandemic, even as the job market appears to be rebounding on the strength of a reopened economy. The Labor Department saying today that jobless claims increased last week to 419,000, the most in two months from 368,000 the previous week. The number of first-time applications, which generally tracks layoffs, has been topping 900,000 in early January. Economists characterized last week's increase as most likely a blip caused by some one-time factors and partly a result of the inevitable bumpiness in the week-to-week data. Applications for jobless aid jumped last week, especially in Michigan, where GM has announced that it's shutting down truck production because of supply shortages. In your Market Watch, recapping trading on the BISX from Wednesday, your market movers, Bahamas First Holdings moving 13,000, closing down 3 cents to 248, Commonwealth Bank moving 19,610, up 14 cents to 274, CIBC First Caribbean Bank moving 1,000, down 40 cents to 980, Doctors Hospital moving 1,000, Closing unchanged at 775. Folk call moving 2,000 down 9 cents to 390. Consolidated water down 2 cents to 243. Emir Incorporated up 7 cents to 11.24. The Bissex All Share Index closing at 1,963.98 down 7.33. That's your market watch. And that is your morning business brought to you by CFAL, growing wealth for future generations. We are back here with Morning Blend Business on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strawn, along with Laverne Gard, the president of the Exuma Chamber of Commerce. One more uh, question about the... Uh, make, make that Pedro roll. What did I say? Oh, boy, you know, I just read an email. Sorry, Pedro roll. Just read an email yeah, off Yeah, I here. thought I was wrong. I was like, oh, I called him roll. Roll. And, and from Exuma, I should know better, right? Um, <laughs> they ain't no Rob. They ain't no Robert. Right? <laughs> and, all, and, and only rolls. Oh, no. Oh, anyway, Pedro Roll. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Um, so uh, our colleague, Nahaja Black, who has a show, The Hit Back, was on the inaugural cruise. And uh, she did the first week. And um, they stopped in Exuma. And she said on the show, on her show as well, that Exuma was the most disappointing leg of the cruise. That there wasn't enough to do and it wasn't, it seemed like people didn't really, I'm paraphrasing, but didn't really care so much. Um, what, I, I know what you're saying, what you said before the break, but 
is that the sentiment on the entire island that this isn't really for us and um, we'd rather be doing something else? What What is the issue there? No, you know, I, I really sentiments that are being expressed across the board. It's kind of split. There are quite a number of persons um, whose views differ from mine, which is that, you know, what do we have to lose? The, the, the cruise ship is coming. Um, and let's see if we can take advantage of whatever it is they bring. That is a perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I don't think that there was this groundswell of this overwhelming expectation. And again, I'm going to go back to two, two factors, I think, that may have contributed to, to, to it, where there was not this overwhelming excitement. First is, it goes back to local input. When decisions are made for the locals right, instead of by the locals, then the, the, the input isn't as good, the expectation isn't, isn't as great. And, and, and it's like someone just coming in and they're saying, the government, the central government is saying, all right, let's send them here, as opposed to the locals are saying, man, let's invite them here and let's participate and let's see how we benefit from this, mm -hmm. right? And so... I understand that Nasher's point of view, and I think to a, to a large extent it is it is correct. And the other aspect of it is when it's not when we don't have local buy-in, then then that that means that persons on the ground they have they are not going to prepare, and there's not this okay they are coming in. Let's make sure that this is set up to accommodate them. Something of this nature does require a lot of preparation to make sure that things are in place that. Uh, People know when they come in, this is where the tourists will possibly go, and, and this is what they will do when they get there. To me, in my, from my point of view, none of this or very little of this was done, mm -hmm. right? And so, so we, if no preparation is made, then that's what you're going to see. And that disappoints me because, I mean, there is no better in this Bahamas than Exuma. And for that to be the, the, the sentiment eh, of the press, uh, it is, is disappointing, even if it's true. Yeah. Wow. Oh, boy. Okay, so I have to tell you, I haven't been to Exuma in a long time. Long, long, long time. And the last time I was there, this was even before um, Emerald Bay opened. In fact, I was there for the, ground, the, the, the groundbreaking, if you can imagine that. I haven't been back since then. I know I have to correct that. But at that time, it seemed like tourism was, eh, yeah, we could do this too. Um, but the fishing and um, the focus on the environment seemed to be a bigger push there. Um, has that changed entirely? Is that still a big factor in the economy? What are some of the key driving forces for the economy other than tourism today? Yeah. Well, if you look around, I think, again, the fishing and agriculture that aspect of our economy have been minimized uh, to our detriment. Right? I was born on this island, and 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 growing up, it's it's uh, like Exuma was the onion capital of the Bahamas, for instance. I mean, I uh, my that. parents fed fed me uh, uh, off agriculture and fishing. Wow. They sent me. I went to Nassau to send the distance of agriculture and fishing. Mm. Um, so, but we have not that. Not only have we not expanded those industries, uh, it, it has declined in importance, right? And so now we are we are, we are importing things that we we are eating fish now that that have strange names, you know. And 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 I think it's an insult to come to a place like Exuma and we have imported fish, you know, mm -hmm. and we are importing onions and, and tomatoes, and, and it, it's an insult to all that God has given to us. But if you look around the like we have a number of we have uh, homes that are being large homes that are being built. Uh, foreign investors are coming in and doing doing business here, and and this is a part of the problem with the cruise ship line as well. I think that but people are not acknowledging. Um, to a large extent, locals are being employed in this industry. For those persons who might be coming in on a cruise ship. Uh, once per week for, I don't know, a couple of for month, for months. That's not as big a deal as some folks want to make that out to be. But because folks are being employed in construction, in, 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 in gardening, in, 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 in housekeeping, and those kinds of stuff. And so the economy is growing. It is visible. I mean, it is visible to our eyes. We see the, 
the room rates that are being uh, being rented, the, the Airbnb. We see the 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 cars, the the tourists driving the rental cars. I mean, that's exploding on Exuma uh, to the point where locals can, if you are a Bahamian and you want to come here as a civil servant, I mentioned this to someone yesterday that. The difficult thing to find reasonable uh, apartment rental or house rentals if you are a civil servant, a teacher, a, a nurse, or somebody who, who's coming in, a police officer, mm -hmm. because all of these rooms now are being taken off of the market and placed in Airbnb, and it making, it's making it impossible for folks to afford uh, local rental. So if you ask me, the economy of Exuma is, is growing, and, and I don't think that a cruise ship line um, mixes well with that or excites people to the extent that I think that maybe uh, Ministry of Tourism maybe thought that, it, that they would. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, we saw your comments in a local paper about that, your realtor, um, a real estate agent. So, yeah, let's talk more about that. Um, what's exactly happening there? Prices now out of reach for a lot of people as well, um, with the second home market being so large? Well, it, it has really impacted it. And, and, and here again, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, so what has happened is uh, we have a limited amount of um, rental units available, yes? And if you take any number of those units off of the, the, uh, the lease market, if you take that out of the market, then that's going to make sure, make cause the remaining units. You know, these guys are going to raise their price. That's the, way, that's, that's the way the market economy works. So prices have increased in terms of rental. Um, but I look at that as a positive because now it gives local Bahamians in certain communities, whether you like, we have our indigenous communities for what we call common edges. And now those communities have a wonderful opportunity to build what I call rental units that's affordable for teachers and civil servants and those kinds of things. It's a, it's a business opportunity now to become owners of our own estate, as opposed to uh, having foreign interests build hotels or build these kinds of units. And, and the, the benefits of that uh, is accrued to some of those not in local or behavior. Mm -hmm. So this is an opportunity for us. We just need to be able to take advantage of it. Yeah. How, how big is the Airbnb market there? Uh, how big are we talking? How big is the what? Airbnb market. The how big I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you. I don't know how to be quantify when you say how big. But no. I mean, the it's, the presence is really, really huge to the extent that um, it's. I'm telling you this, right? Uh, so last week, like someone called me and they asked me, uh, "Hey, listen, I need an apartment. Uh, you know, I'm looking. I mean, I'm being transferred to a you know, I need an apartment. And, and my my answer to them is, um, man, I'd rather that you beg me for money than to ask me to find you an apartment. Oh, boy. Uh, and it's easy for me, it's easy for me to do that. No, it is, but it is really, really a challenge because um, uh, increasingly now we, people are calling and, and, and different persons from different real estate companies. We are, we are networking, man, do you know of anything? Do you have an apartment? That's a real challenge, right? Mm -hmm. um, because Exuma is growing and more and more persons are wishing to come here to live. Uh, to work and what have you, but they, I'm not so sure that they can afford to do so when uh, a couple of years ago, an apartment may have cost $800 and now you're going to have to pay $1,500 for that apartment. Mm. Um, if you're a civil servant, you are given an allowance. Uh, the allowance that, that they're being given can't pay for the rental. All right. We've got some calls coming in, a lot of interesting text messages. We're going to get to those in a bit. Um, let's take this call, and then I'm going to read some of these messages for you, Pedro Roll. But um, good morning, call. You're on Morning Blend Business. Good morning, Dwight. Good morning. This gentleman, uh, he is good. You're breaking up. Do we lose him? Yep. Okay, call us back. I don't know what happened to your phone. Um, uh, yeah, call us back. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Tweet us, Facebook us, or text us, 4224-796. Okay, here's a text. Now, you did say that we were going to cause you to get in trouble. But here's a text. This person is saying... Hmm. Imagine our entire tourism product hitting rock bottom for a year. Then the head of the Exuma Chamber of Commerce comes on to complain about who comes. We want anyone that will come, lest we starve, is a 
different tourist product available immediately. The cruise was an immediate option that many wish they had. This is incredible. Okay, what are you? We're getting a couple messages like that. What are you saying that um, this is a gift and that you should be thankful that after what we experienced last year, this is an option which they had. Uh, and really, that's the point I made uh, at the very on the outset. Is I'm not knocking the cruise ship industry. I'm knocking. I am saying that I'm questioning the overall impact and how it impacts the exuma economy. This same cruise ship could have gone to another island, for instance, and its impact would have been so huge on that island that it may, maybe makes sense for that island. And we, we need to ensure that what is done in our space is meaningful and sustainable for our space. Not every gift not everything that's given to us is necessarily a gift of value, right? So don't sit back and say, oh, well, the, the chamber is complaining about a business, I mean, an opportunity. The reality is that the cruise ship came and uh, we can look and we can question and we can analyze at the end of the day, the economic impact. So just because they are coming don't mean that we are benefiting from it. So that, this is the issue I'm making. We need to analyze who is benefiting from it and to what extent we are, we are being benefited and if the effort and resources that was put into it could have given us more. But this is all about investment, right? Mm -hmm. You can invest in anything, but you would like to have the opportunity to invest in the thing that gives you the greater return. Yeah. And that's all I'm saying. Okay. Is this giving us the greater return? All right, here's another call. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. How you all doing? Good morning, everyone. Hi. You know, for me, Avenue, I have chosen to look for in employment. And so I created the employment like a whole lot of us. I'm, I'm agreeing with you, but this is what I call to add to what you say. Mm -hmm. Is it about Exuma? Part about Exuma. Yeah, yes, okay. Exuma, mm -hmm. uh, primarily Exuma, because Ooh. this conversation is about Exuma. Yes, indeed. Chester Cooper just left. Oh. And we have our brother now who would take some of the blows that Mr. Chester Cooper ducked. Well, I don't know if that I don't know if that's fair for him, I don't think. No, no, I okay. only that's only a blow just. Oh, okay. not blows in a bad blows mm -hmm. meaning question mm. or or he will give um, you know. All right, let's get to it. Uh-huh. Anyway, balance in my humble opinion is what makes democracy or the rule of law movement work in my opinion. What that have to do with what your topic is? You see the Bahamian people, a whole lot of them are unemployed in Exuma. Okay? They have, the Exuma people love their island. They have an idea, their own personal idea, what they desire their island to look like so they can live in it. Because the, the island can But anyway, no balance, no justice. No justice equals to chaos. Balance is justice. Oh, okay. Right. I'm not sure what the question was, but that was going to be one of my questions, Pedro. Um, uh, employment levels on the island. Um, how are things looking there? And um, it sounds like you could need, uh, you need a lot of people in construction, um, but what are we looking at right now? How, how are things, especially since the pandemic? Uh, right. I, and again, because we don't have um, what I call realistic, I mean, actual figures, but you know, we, we, we get a sense from being around. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there is a um, credible amount of persons living on a German who want to work that cannot work, oh. right? Wow. I, I think that opportunities are here to ensure or, or to, to, to allow us all to be able to work if we, if we desire to work. The, uh, the amount of persons who are moving to a German for employment reasons, right? is as high probably as it's been back in the days of, um, you know, when we had Emerald Bay probably open, right? We have, a, it is a desirable destination. It is a place where people are feeling that they can um, make a living. And, and, and so that's, and I'm saying that's a good thing in the, in, in the construction field and, and the, 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 the manual arts fields and what have you. Uh, what we are lacking, I think, is the, um, more of the, if we had more, if the government government agencies, for instance, would make more, 
have more of a presence here, even though we can't complain as Exuma either because we have more government departments represented in Exuma than most islands, right? Mm -hmm. But if we continue to have, have expand those departments and what have you, then we have we have a greater mixture of, of, of persons coming in here to work. So, but I mean, we talk about the balance even in the tourist industry. I, I, I couldn't hear the, the caller very well, but my issue would be, uh, again, we can expand, we benefit from the tourist, to, from tourism that comes to Exuma right now. When persons come in and they spend 10 days and they spend two weeks and they spend, hey, we have boaters who come here and spend months. We need to find a way to capture uh, their presence and, uh, and cause them to invest on a long-term basis. And we have a greater opportunity to do it with that type of visitor than with someone who comes in for the day. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep coming back to that point. Uh, my investment in that in this type of visitors reward than a visitor who comes here for a day. Mm, wow. All right, let's take this call and then we got to take a break. Uh, good morning, call. You're on the air. I, I think I might have got cut off a bit. Um, back to Mr. Roll. Um, that point we just made uh, with the visitor who comes in for a day and the visitor who comes there for 10 days. That's a Zuma market. A Zuma market is the visitor who wants to spend two weeks and, and maybe three weeks. Because when I was down there, a lot of the visitors were full of I don't know who your provider is, but something is wrong. Yeah. We need to get that sorted out, sir. Okay. Um, yeah. But, but, but yeah. let me say that really quickly, because I, I, his, his, his point that he was big, eh? he's mm -hmm. saying that's the extreme market. And let's come, keep coming back to this, you know what I mean? You know, it's the Hey, same song, just different voice, right? Mm -hmm. hey, if if we uh, we need to cater then to our market, why are we diluting our market? If the if the market if we are attracting a certain type of visitor, let's refine that market and let's cater to that market so that we get greater return. I'm not knocking anybody else. I'm just saying. This is where the greater return comes. Okay. Let's take our final break. When we come back, we want to talk about the future, the, sure, the medium-term future, the long-term future, where Exuma goes from here. Again, we're talking with the Exuma president of uh, the uh, Chamber of Commerce, Pedro Roll. Uh, stay with us. This is Morning Blend Business on Guardian Radio 96.9. Wait, why you look so mash up, like clothes at the washer? No, no, but just a hard day. Wait, hard day? What happened? The breakfast lady ran out of tuna and Gretzi. We need to start joking about everything, you know. This serious, boy. This real serious, boy. Wait, what's serious? Tell me. All right, well, today, boss gave us boy one big, big contract. And nobody else get a chance and nobody say nothing. Boy, you know that ain't right. You know government contracts ain't supposed to go that way. Yeah, but nobody's saying nothing. Boss man just tell people to sign the papers. Then he sent me to meet his boy down town and collect this envelope. You need to tell somebody. You need to become a whistleblower. You know he's a real man, but I never blow no whistle. I be drunk all my life and junk No way. A whistleblower is someone who tells people what they see when they see something wrong happening at work. But I ain't no whistleblower and I ain't no snitch. I still wait there, you know. But ain't nobody gonna know it's you. All you gotta do is call Crime Stoppers or you could text them from inside the crack crime Bahamas app. They don't ask about you. And your call goes straight through to Miami. So nobody knows you is. And if you text, your message get mixed up like Kong Salad. Calls reach away 8477 from NAS 377 from the Family Islands. You invest in your children, your home, and your community. But are you investing in your financial future? At CFAO, we specialize in investment management, retirement planning, mutual funds, and private wealth management. Our team of experts never stops helping you plan for tomorrow. Because tomorrow begins today. Call us at 502-7010 to see what our financial advisors can do for you. CFAO, growing wealth for future generations. It takes a village to raise a child, and it takes each and every one of us to grow the Bahamas. On the clock, we dive into the stories, we identify the issues, and we engage the people, organizations, and institutions that keep the country running. On the clock with Erin Green, weekdays 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. here on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM.
Got you a quick final look at weather for this morning. We've got a building high pressure ridge along with Saharan dust trickling into the area. That's going to affect weather conditions over the island through to over the islands through tonight. Beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to rip currents along east and south coast beaches. And we're expecting another hot day today. Everybody's being advised to limit outdoor activities and to remain hydrated due to high heat indices, triple digit heat indices again today. For all areas today, partly sunny, hot, and a bit hazy with a chance of isolated showers or thunderstorms becoming fair and warm tonight. Breezy in the southeast Bahamas. Small craft caution for the southeast Bahamas as well. Highs getting up to 93 Fahrenheit, 34 Celsius, but that heat index again in the triple digits today down to a very warm 79 Fahrenheit, 26 Celsius. In your extended outlook, the Saharan dust expected to remain over the area tomorrow, keeping conditions a bit hazy, but by Saturday, a surface low pressure system with a trailing trough near South Florida will enhance unsettled weather over the northwest Bahamas and that'll lead into the weekend Saturday and beyond Friday tomorrow mostly sunny hot and a bit hazy with the chance of isolated showers and thunderstorms fair and warm at night with a chance of showers and thunderstorms Saturday mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms over the northwest Bahamas Variably cloudy, hot, and humid with the chance of showers in the central and southeast Bahamas. That's your morning blend weather check. And we are back here with Morning Blend Business. Dwight Strong along with Laverne Gardner. We are talking with Pedro Roll, the president of the Exuma Chamber of Commerce. Our final few minutes here. Talking about what's next. What's next for Exuma? Um, as you, you stated the case, and I think most of the people in the Family Islands uh, see the benefit of town or city management, local uh, empowered government, and island government, island administrations, um, and, uh, true federal system here, but uh, it's difficult getting politicians and Nasuvians to understand that. Um, uh, what more needs to be done to get that message across? And again, um, uh, what does, what do you be the future of Exuma, medium term and long term? Well, a number of things are happening in Exuma. I think on the short term, um, even going back to the cruise ship, they're, they're going to be, we're going to have accrued benefits, um, um, from these things happening, but, you know, sustainability is an issue. Uh, long-term, I think in order for Exuma to become um, the best version of itself, it, we're going to go back to the point we made initially that you referred to just now, is going to require a greater level of local governance where we are, we are the ones that's making the decision whether Nassauvians in uh, agree with it or not, it's our decision because it's our island. We, we need to be able to manage it in a manner that makes sense because we're the ones that's, that's living here. Um, I'm bullish on the future of Exuma's economy. Um, I'm, I'm a little concerned that if the system of our system of governance does not change, it continues to stifle, it continues to frustrate, and we're going to continue to go around and say, we may, we may uh, in a vortex, we may, we may move up just a little bit, but unfortunately, in a vortex, uh, we move down as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think that we are we are well poised uh, on the international scene. Uh, Exuma is loved and respected. Folks want to come here. Uh, real estate has continued. People are investing in real estate. Uh, unfortunately, we have too many of our prime real estate being uh, purchased by non bahamians and, and those who own your land, they own your country. I mean, and that's unfortunate. But so, but if we continue to advance economically, I think we, we get the opportunity to control more and more of our own land. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Pedro Roll, hopefully this won't be the last time we talk with you. It's been a great discussion this morning. Looking forward to more. And uh, thank you so much for the time this morning. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Dwight. Thank you. Thank you so much, as always. We'll talk with you again next week. 
And I'll be back tomorrow morning with more Morning Blend and Morning Blend business here on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strawn, have a great day. Stay tuned for On the Clock with Aaron Green up next. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas.